Wow, I can't believe that just happened. Hello, what is up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have everybody back here live for round two. I do apologize. The first stream ended kind of abruptly and kind of out of whack. Just, I think... I think my computer just needed the good old restart. Everything's been working fine. I've switched liveries a couple not a couple times now. Had no issues. Um, but yeah, you did see that we were gonna do that return leg. Bugged out. Couldn't get the uh, EFB to restart. Then when I did, I had some other issues. But a simple restart of the PC seemed to have fixed that. I've loaded in uh, two or three times now, changing liveries. Everything seems to be a okay. And I was just sitting here admiring this and I got to thinking like man we are so fortunate to have devs like Phoenix and Microsoft because I'm sitting here looking at this 320 connected to the jet bridge we've got the reflection I fast forwarded the time two hours so it's 4 uh, 4 10 p.m. or 4 10 p.m. in Phoenix the engine is lightly windmilling on the right side here the left engine or I guess that'd be the right engine technically uh, the number two engines windmilling and just what a time to be a simmer look at the, the PBR the way the light is hitting this right now I mean we are truly 
just truly in a incredible time to be flight sim fans. I'm over here getting my real world EFB set up for emergency procedures. I'm thinking about system resets, how what we can do. And I'm like, this is a, a public flight sim that we get to do all this cool stuff in. So I just want to shout out the whole Phoenix team and uh, just for, for the dedication to the project. I mean, when, v, when the first Phoenix dropped, I mean, it was game changing for me. And now this V2 Block 2 is just, it's even better. I mean, this is the pinnacle. In my opinion, this airplane right here, right now, is the pinnacle of flight simulation. And it's, uh, it's just amazing to be a part of. So, um, we got a lot on the plate tonight. Let's go over a little bit of a rundown. Zachary J, best intro yet. That was gold. Made Zachary J, good to see you, man. Thank you for the $2 super chat. Appreciate you. And we have 10 more gifted memberships. JP gifted 10 more out. I appreciate you, JP. Very, very kind of you. Thank you for that. If you pick up a membership from JP, make sure you say thank you. Uh, I've got the fly live bar off right now because... Um, not because it's, I think it's interfering sometimes with Phoenix, but I'm going to be doing like heads down stuff with the screen. And sometimes I don't realize that fly live is actually blocking the switches I'm manipulating or whatever I'm trying to manipulate. So we're going to go fly live off on this one. The lowdown for today's flight. We are sitting in Phoenix Sky Harbor. We're going to blast off out of here with the intention of going to San Diego. Now, this is not, this is still not the full blown break everything stream. That's going to come, I think, on Friday because I need to, I want to prep that one a little bit more, get some more juice on it. But we do have a broken Airbus today and we've got some things we need to test. We've got some things we need to go over. And the best part about this, recently, my company, my operator, we've uh, changed the way we do our emergency EFB handling. So, like when we have an ECAM uh, and then we go to a different uh, software app for, um, QRH and uh, FCOM, whatever. So it's just, it's all the same stuff. It's just in different places. So it's very good to use the sim as a tool to kind of familiarize myself with where to find everything. So if it takes me a minute to look up something, I apologize, but it's because it's I'm still getting used to it. Now, I did have to do a system a reset uh, just the other day, and I was trying to remember what it was. And for the life of me, I can't remember. So, um, but anyway, back to the lowdown. Our APU is in op. So we're doing a uh, we're going to do a, jet, a ground power and a jetway air start. So hover cart and ground power. Then we're going to do a cross bleed start. I've got something else primed up in the old failure section, and somebody mentioned it earlier in the chat. And uh, yes, Dave, yeah, EQRH, yep. Um, but it's it's all yeah, it's it's just different. It's all the same info, but like the way we access it and man, the manipulators are different. So I have a I'm just. I think it's better in the long run. I just need more practice with it. Um, so this is actually a great tool to do that uh, in. Um, but what I was going to say, though, um, somebody mentioned on the countdown, they really want to hear a compressor stall. And I really want to hear a compressor stall, too. And we're going to do a bunch of compressor stalls on the Break Everything. I'll just title the stream. You'll know the name. It'll be like Breaking Amir's Brand New Tour or something like that. And that will probably be on Friday, where we are just going to throw everything that we possibly can at the Phoenix to break it. That'll probably be on Friday. Um, but... If we have the same amount of likes or greater than we do viewers, by the time we cross the runway threshold, I will trigger up compressor stalls at V1 and we will just roll with it. We'll do what we got to do. And uh, whether we come back, we come back, whether we can pull it back, fix it, we'll keep going. We'll see. But that's only if the likes equal the viewership at the time of crossing the runway threshold to take off. So. Because I just got to throw that in there. That, that, that could throw a wrench into my whole plan for this stream. So I'm going to give it a hard goal to reach. But if we hit it, maybe you'll be rewarded. So uh, let's get this show popping. Nabil, thank you for the one month of support. I'm loving the B2 showcase. Hey, man, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm absolutely loving it. This has just been, uh, this airplane is so much fun. I was actually just texting Phantom. I was like, man, what do you think? And he's like, dude, profanity, 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 profanity. Awesome. And I was like, yeah. Me too. I'm kind of blown away. So here we go. Let's fire this puppy up. Get back into the cockpit. We are in the 654 Alpha Whiskey, an old America West bird. Let's fire it up as normal, and we'll go through our procedures as normal uh, with full intention to go to San Diego. We'll roll with the punches as they come. So battery one, battery two is coming online. You can hear the uh, gyro spinning up because we got our old school ADI. I'm going to juice up the sounds too. 
Uh, send you some sexy A320 IE picks in the Discord DM that are not in X Planner Microsoft Lights. And Thomas Ray. Oh, I'll check them out, man. Thank you. Battery test. Yeah, I forgot to do that. So I also want to apologize for the last stream. I was so excited for the stuff that's happening on the screen. So I'm like trying to contain my own excitement and still like see we had such a great turnout. I'm obviously excited about that too. There's like so much excitement going on. I just got semi scatterbrained. I'm like, oh, let's do a battery test. And oh, well, let's go look at the wings, set the wing views. Never did a battery test. So we're going to try to be a little bit more streamlined on this one. But here we go. We're going to power it on up. I believe there's a way to change and modify which uh, like flight warning computer this thing has. I don't know. There's more digging. I'm going to have to dig into the manual on this. If Fractality knows I love reading manuals and I might actually have to look into this one. Mike's basement. Yeah, I finally got them, baby. I finally got those IAEs. Let's uncage this old school ADI right here. Mm -mm -mm. No sim sound? Oh, my goodness. It was muted. Oh, you missed all of that. I'm sorry. I even juiced it up. I feel like we need to rewind the stream. We had the beautiful, all the wonderful sounds. Uh, sorry, I had it muted for the countdown because it'll double the audio. Should be up, up and juicy. I'll tell you what. We'll just, I'm going to... I'm going to run the audio all the way up here and here. But you guys keep telling me my mic is too loud, so I don't want the sim to over... Or my mic is too quiet. All right, we're going to let her get completely powered up, and then we'll run through our flows. Billy B 16 loving the IAEs. Amen, man. I love them, too. Look at these beautiful puppies sitting out here. Ooh, we got a jet blue Brooklyn with IAEs. Yeah, this is just so much awesomeness. So much awesomeness. <laughs> V1's going to read this. Is, hey, I didn't say I was going to read, Tom. I said I need to read. I didn't say I was going to. <laughs> I just love that meme. I was elected to lead, not to read. All right. Up to the overhead. Here we go. Crew supplies coming on. Ground controls coming on. CVI. <laughs> Eight ears. One, two, three. TTO. We're timing. Uh, that's going to be in the uh, auto position, nav position one. That's going to go auto arm you. Everything looks good here. We'll go ahead and do a battery test now. 25.6 volts or greater. Now, I can tell you right now, I bet you this is going to fail. I bet you it's going to fail just by looking at the overhead. Let's see. So we're going to be looking at our volts and amps. We need less than 60 decreasing within 10 seconds after re-engaging the uh, BCLs. So, we're going to go ahead and turn them off. Map, map. And coming back on. Survey says 60 amps. Yep. We're going to need to charge them batteries. So, how you charge batteries, you basically just stay connected to the GPU for about 30 minutes. And then we would do another test before uh, pushing back, obviously. So uh, we need to juice up the batteries. I think that's got to be a sim thing. Most, I mean, I've, I don't know. I've, uh, I'd say it's, you probably have a 10% chance of having to do that your batteries fail the charge test. Um, most of ours are, are pretty good. But so this would be a failed battery charging or not battery charging test. It'd just be a, a failed uh, battery test, really. So we're going to just leave it as is. We'll leave the external power on. They're going to charge up the batteries and then we'll be good to go. So fire test one, two. The APU is already in opt. Um, we'll test it, though. And actually, so we've got a low oil. I'm going to we'll fight. We'll pretend to fire it up. And we'll see if we get the. I'm sure we will get the low oil message and all that. So, all right, that looks good. I'm going to hit a magic barrel ref key, and then I'm going to come down here. Let's go FMGC. Now, I did update the AIRAC. Look at that. Boom, AIRAC is updated. Let's do an init request. The one thing I did not update is GSX. So, I instant loaded the aircraft, and we're going to load it the old school way because Fractality, if you're still here, if it ain't broken, I ain't going to fix it. So, we got all these fancy new features that I love, but uh, it requires me to read a GSX setup manual. So we've loaded it up instantly. And now if I go here and hit load aircraft, theoretically, it should do everything, right? We shall see. Hopefully I didn't just bug the whole airplane out again. <laughs> all right, so boarding's requested. Flight number, we're American. American, 357, we're going to Phoenix Sky Harbor to Los Angeles. What'd I say, San Diego? Oh no, that's an alternate, we're going to alternate Los Angeles, we're going to San Diego, welcome board. 
All right, uh, cost index, we're going to go 75. Do you want to board crew? Nope, we're already on board. Uh, cruise altitude. Westbound, even altitude, 320. Check. IRS init, it's aligning. We're going to let it do its own alignment. Now, it says wait for your action, open half cargo. I think you know how to do it, right? Oh, do I? I think it'll do it by itself. Maybe it won't. We'll see if it does it by itself. Ooh, it's getting dark. And we are going at sunset, so uh, actually it doesn't look like it knows how to open the cargo. Okay, we'll open it. Uh, what do we need to do? One right. Oh, that's, that's, that's the wrong door. Oh, well. Forward and aft cargo. That's what I meant. Oh, listen to that. Watch the modeling on the cargo doors as they open up, hit the stops, and wobble. What's that push button on the outboard edge of the glare shield? I feel like that is new. Push button. Look at those little wobble wobbles. Gotta love it. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna get dark. I was kind of hoping we'd be flying at sunset, but I don't know. A night takeoff at a Phoenix might just be the juice. Uh, this button over here, ATC message. Phantom. Or not Phantom. What's your name? Fly Navy. Uh, if you go here, and you can do a lights test, and guess what? You get to see all the lights that are on in your cockpit. I think the... Uh, the Gen, the Gen Z bus, uh, the Gen, what are you? You're like a, you're the millennial bus. The millennial bus should have an enunciator lights test. So that's your ATC message uh, when you're running DCDUs. Now, considering that there's a placard right here, I'm going to assume that this aircraft does not have a DCDU, so we're not going to use that today. But um, yeah, we'll go ahead and turn the enunciator light off. We'll get the cockpit lights juiced up. We'll make sure the dome is off for start. Yeah, so we're going to leave that off because I do want to see how the night lighting is in this puppy. Uh, Caro said to check it out. You don't do a lights test, Wingnut? You don't really? So honestly, Wingnut, it's not in our procedures to do it. Um, like if you read through our initiating flows and stuff, like it's not in there. But I, I've i always been taught, you know, yeah, you check them. First fly of the day, whatever. Um, so I check them whenever, like aircraft swap, whenever I think about it. And the other day I checked it and there was three lights that were not working. So it was, and it, what, what clued me in was I hit the fuel tank pump switch and it didn't do anything. So the off light in the left fuel tank was not working. That was in op. Um, we had two other lights that were in op on the overhead. Uh, one was the center tank pump. or So we had left tank and this one were out. And I cannot for the life of me remember what the other one was now. Um... Yeah, I'm drawing a blank now. But yeah, I did the lights test. I'm like, oh, well, there's three light bulbs that aren't working. Good thing this is the terminating leg of this flight, and I'm going to write it up here in base. So I had to write it up. But yeah, it's not in our procedures to do it either, which I find kind of strange. Yeah, I, I mean, no fire test at all? Really, wingnut? Okay, that's actually kind of surprising. Yeah, we do a fire test every leg or every crew swap. Okay, our box, let's get the box loaded up so we can get uh, with all the juicies. We're going to depart off of, uh, you guessed it, 26 right, or I'm sorry, 25 right, because that's the juicy one. We're on the, Mo oh no, we're on the Firebird 1 departure. I'm going to have to check the winds though. Firebird 1, Mohawk transition, we'll insert that. That links everything up here, hogs into San Diego. We're planning for the uh, localizer 27 approach. Coming down the lucky one RNAV arrival. And that's going to be off of the hogs. Transition. No one tells Sharp. He's going to go hunting all the hogs. So we've got hogs in there. We'll insert that. I feel like there's a new glow on the screen. This definitely looks... I don't remember this. It just looks good, though. I mean, this is... Incredible. There's a glow coming off this McDo right now. Winds are variable at three. Thank you, Canadian. See, it's the best part about having chat. I don't have to look up the weather. All right, so our flight plan is in there. I want to make sure I'm going to leave the failures the way they are. We're not even going to mess with them because I have some preloaded. Uh, secondary flight plan, though, we are messing around today with failures. So let's go ahead and make sure we do it properly. We're going to go Phoenix to Phoenix in here. Uh, Phoenix, Phoenix, secondary secondary flight plan if we come back around i want to come back to the uh, longer runway which will be two six i want ils two six in there secondary perf data and you know what's kind of cool is because the efb is so snappy now look at this i mean i can go right here let's go to the approach let's let's get the proper mins in there ils two six 
Um, it's just so snappy to manipulate. I love the EFB. This one is given. This is given the fly pad a run for its money. Like straight up honest with you. I mean, they are fly pad has always been snappy. This is definitely snappy. Now I'm gonna have to give the edge to this one because we got some extra juice in there too. We got the failures. We got the QRH. We got reset table. So this one takes the cake for now. But the fly pad is in a close second. But I got it. This is this is the best DFB I think in the sim now. It has been re re kinged. Uh, number one. So ILS 26, if we have to come back around, God help us. 1385 is the DA. We'll put that in there. 1385. The winds are light and variable, so we'll just uh, zero them out as before. We'll put that there. A wind zero for zero. There's a nav upgrade. Uh, let's do a temp off the ECAM. Two seven degrees. You know, I've never monitored the engine uh, EGT more than I have in the last like four days after watching the video for block two and learning that like like you know these you learn these things about how it cools you know when you start like at the very beginning of learning about how to fly jets and then it just kind of goes to the back of your mind because it's not really important in a day-to-day -day basis you know to be looking at your EGTs all the time um, as long as everything is in the green or not red, you're good. But then after watching that block two video with the mirror talking about how they modeled all this thermal dynamics and stuff, I have been watching my EGTs on the real airplane like a hawk from shutdown to startup and everything is true. So it's pretty cool. I said take off two five right, but the return Canadian will be two six. What did I put in here uh, for takeoff? I said take off two five right. That's what we want. Two five rights in the box. But the return, the emergency return will be two six. The reason for that is it's a longer runway. Always land on the longer runway if possible. So secondary is in there. Rad nav. I'm going to hard tune the PXR VOR. Progress page. Sky Harbor is going in the prog. Boom. Perf. We're going to leave it. Init B. We'll leave it just like that for now because I kind of want to watch. We got we to gotta look at some baggage loading here before it gets too dark. They're almost done loading the bags. And we don't have an APU to start, so I just wanted to get a, see what this looks like out here as the sun's getting dim. Uh, Andres, I did not do the minus 20 sensitivity yet. I am going to do this flight with the SDS on. Ooh, but that reminds me. I think I want to adjust my rudders. Um, I might adjust my rudders, though. I'm going to figure out how to do that. I didn't spend any time. I went and grabbed lunch and a coffee, and I came back. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to do... Um, more flight control tweaking but SDS I highly recommend even Phantom we were kind of talking he's running the VKB um, and he's or a verbal base sorry he's running a verbal base and we were texting and he's like yeah SDS is what he thinks he feels he remembers the best and I said yeah I like SDS on I'm I'm hung up on the 20% uh, curve though team vodka suggested a 60% reactivity I haven't had time to try that out That'll be on our flight test stream, which I'll, we'll just do it on Friday. The flight test stream is where we're going to break this airplane completely. Uh, we'll do max crosswinds. We'll do fires. Um, and that's when we will mess more with the stick. But I want to just, I only want to change one thing at a time here. So we took off on the last stream with SDS off. We landed with both, concluded SDS was the way to go. I want to take off with SDS on and no curves just so I can see what I'm changing as I'm changing things. Digital Merc says, uh, SDS on my Verpal is feeling pretty sweet, trying the minus 20. Let me know what you think, Digital Merc. Um, I think we're pretty much all in agreement that the SDS is the way to go. Um, I think there might be some debate amongst myself and a few other sim pilots that I know that fly the 320 that are kind of like, yeah, I don't know about the curve yet. So my official stance is SDS on, stand by on the curve. But the Phoenix official stance is minus 20 curve. So, all right, let's close up those doors. Uh, we'll go back here. We'll go to the Phoenix. I mean, look how look how snappy this thing is, man. You guys are killing it over there at Phoenix. We'll close that up. We don't need that. Why would you reopen those doors on me? Oh, it's just the... Locked up. All right. Where is the PCA engine fan heating? We don't need those. Uh, I wonder if, I believe I'm going to have to go into the McDo for ground air, right? So ground service, ground power, ground air. Confirm, as Caro in chat, can anybody confirm that this will be the air to ground air for start? Because it used to be in the EFB, and I don't see it over there. I just see PCA air, which would be air conditioning, engine fan heating, we don't want that, doors and push back. So that would be my assumption. 
rat going to make an appearance today? I don't know. We'll see. Mid livery should be Cactus or later US Airways. Hey, Gustavo, my man, as soon as we get one, Whiskey Throttle, where are you at? We need to drop the America West Baby Blue or US Airways or America West with the, uh, the teal. Any, any one of those three, I will be happy and we'll fly with them. But uh, right now, we got to live with what we got. Phoenix is East Flow. Well, that's great. I'm going to take off West, Team Vodka. Is Iveo, do we have a controller online? If we have a controller online, then we might have to do that. Let me see. Webi says no controller. So, Team Vodka, I know it might be scary for you, my man, but we're going to go East Flow. We're going to go Westbound because we're going under the bridge. We got to go under the bridge. Have you considered pilot a bus? I mean, pilot edge. <laughs> pilot abuse. <laughs> okay. Oh, that took me a minute. Uh, here. Good job, Cam. That got me. That's funny. All right. 29901. I'm going to set top altitude initially. 10,000 feet is set. Uh, let's go over to the weights. So we're going to come down here. Let's go to weight and balance. Send to McDo. Boom. McDo weights are in there. 122.2, 30.0. Our fuel is 11,000. That's on board and checked. Fuel tank pumps are coming online. Seatbelt sign is coming online. And uh, we know it's not going to work, but let me show you here. We'll turn the APU power on. Oh, low oil level ECAM. Now, this is not an automatic no-go with the APU. You can still run the APU with a low oil level alert. Uh, it just depends on how much time you have or how many cycles you have. Maintenance will track this item and they will actually allow you to run with a low oil level. Um, but if I fire it up, it's not going to work because I've already disconnected the APU um, bus or whatever. So that's what it looks like. No APU. APU is deferred. We need to do a ground uh, briefing. So before we do that, let's get our perf data. We'll do departure performance. We're going to blast off two, five, right, taxiing under the bridge, dry surface, flap optimum, toga. Uh, yes. Anti-ice and packs will be dependent upon the likes and weather conditions will sync with the live. No intersection data. Calculate 2124. Beautiful. Send to McDo. Welcome to the 21st. Are we still in the 21st century, right? Flaps three down. Look at that. Hmm. Got to love that. Preconditioned air. It is preconditioned air? Uh oh. So if that's preconditioned air, would be wrong. Alerts muted. Ah, zippy. My bad, man. I, they were muted. I so many. I had so much generosity already. I had to mute it. Let me unmute them. Sorry, guys. I really do apologize when I have the alert box muted. Um, actually, they weren't muted. Did I miss it? I might have just missed it. I'm just a terrible streamer. Let me play it again for you, zippy. Don't have any pools to crash into. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, no, no pools around here, man. No pools around here. That was uh, that was pretty wicked. I remember when we, we crashed the Phoenix in Las Vegas. Yes, not good. But appreciate the support, man. So, uh, flaps three again. That's in. That's interesting. What's our weight? Um, takeoff weight one thirty two eight. That's an interesting one because we did flaps three earlier. I'm not going to argue with it. Why is our fuel so low? Negative four. Uh, hold on. Let me do zero percent root reserve. Good traffic catch up through 799. We're uh, pushing off for Bravo 16. There we go. I don't know why there was a negative alternate time in there. So 2.5224, 17 minutes extra gas. Not a whole lot of extra gas. All right, cool. All right, he's pushing back. I'm getting good FPS with the update. Everything's so smooth. Yeah, it's it's really smooth. The incredible EFB pushing you into config three toga. It didn't give us a toga, did it? Oh, it's like it's. Well, here we go. Look, if I force toga, no. Let me see. Flex fifty five still flaps three. What if I do one plus F? Optimum force toga. Yes. I'll just go back to that. Flap Street, 2124. That's fine. Okay, well, that will be a problem, though, if we can't get ground air. Forward, aft, stairs, chalk, cones, bolt. We'll see, chat. Oh, I don't know if we'll be able to do it. So, um, we'll see. 
let's run through a quick before start or cockpit prep that's going there that gets me every time all right maintenance log and tail number the onboard and check your pins and covers removed uh, seat belts on fuel 11 on board 11 required and uh, everything else is set okay so for quick review here I'm getting my iPad up ground air start we're gonna start number two first so all the European drivers out there are gonna be very happy for this we're gonna start number two first at the gate if we can do it here with ground air um, we'll do number two we got to use the jetway power as well so we're not going to disconnect the jet bridge until we have a good start on number two uh, I don't believe I can can I arm the door with the jetway attached is that jetway gonna pull off no it's not okay good so that's what it would look like so now let's go beacon on Let's let the doors arm up here, and then we're going to get ready to launch this uh, ground air start. Let me get my stuff here. Engine start, air start unit. Here we go, let's configure. So, pack one, off. Pack two, off. APU bleed is off. Engine one bleed, off. Engine two bleed, off. Cross bleed, open. Air start unit connection request. When cleared to start, we're gonna start engine two for any operational reason. Engine one can be started first. Check the brake accumulator pressure prior to engine start. You should be doing that anyway. The minimum recommended starter supply pressure, 25 PSI. Okay, so that is all checked. Let's see if we can force ourselves some ground air in here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to. I'm gonna move this to ignition start. We don't have any pressure. So let's come over here, ground air, on. Ladies and gentlemen, we have ground air. Cockpit to ground, uh, you guys ready for engine start? Ground to cockpit, roger that. Uh, all hoses and removed, you are clear to start engine number two. Roger, we're starting number two, here we go. Phoenix traffic, uh, JetBlue 799, uh, spot November, taxi 26 via Charlie Bravo 14, because somebody wants to go west. You'll thank me when you taxi under the bridge. We're in Phoenix, not Minneapolis. I do find it very quiet. Do you guys find it very quiet? Now, Phantom said it sounds good on his system. He also has the butt kicker. That seemed very quiet from wing view for engine start. Dude, I'm not going to lie. That was very, very quiet on my end. <clears throat> I will say this, though. We got our avail light. Let's finish our procedure. All right, this is gonna go back to here. Let's finish the procedure. All right, uh, external power is available. External power, we'll do that when it's done. All right, engineer start. Unit request disconnection. So we got a good start. Ground air off. Ground air is off. That's associated. Air tube, air bleed two off, clear air. Clear air, just like the real thing. Uh, in, all right, so now with that disconnected, uh, if the air start unit start engine one, engine one start, which we're not there yet. If cross bleed start engine one, which is what it's going to be, disconnect pack one on, pack two on, engine two bleed on. So they've disconnected, pack one on, pack two on, 
engine two bleed on, that's going to power both packs now. We should see those fault lights exterior here momentarily. And then we will do the cross bleed engine start procedure. I'll get that primed up and ready to go. So that's primed and ready. There's our pack, our fault lights have extinguished. That is gonna stay in the open position. Engine one bleed is off. We have a good start on number two. Cockpit to ground, you're good to pull all, uh, I guess we should move chocks and cones too. And brakes are set. So let's go ahead and let me try a GSX pushback. Oh, hold on, I'll put the chocks on. Oh, really? All right, GSX sucks. All right, chocks and cones off. Uh, GPU, disconnect from here. Verify, electrical page. Generator two is powering the system, beautiful. We'll go ahead and disconnect the GPU and we'll toggle the jetway. That should pull back here. There it is, it's pulling back. Tom Pasco, thank you for the 46 months of support, man. Appreciate you. Since you have the red backlight on, since you're showing us adult content. <laughs> yes, well, since I, I, I use the backlight with the theme of delivery if I can. So red for American and uh, like, I mean, blue for if I can't. And then I'll try to match it. But we got the red backlight today. All right. All right, well, that's all good. Let's go ahead and disconnect that, and uh, we'll go ahead and push back off of gate Bravo 22. Nobody's behind us. That looks juicy. Sky Harbor traffic, American 357, pushing off of uh, Bravo 20 Sky Harbor. All right, let's connect the tug. Is it actually? I don't think it drives into position, does it? No. All right. Let's go ahead and release the brake. Backwards, we go. The <laughs> peel. <laughs> Look at that number one just hanging there. Oh, that is a shot. That looks so good. Guys, if you remember, I know we had a lot of new people tune in here since we went live. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna straighten out and stop. Push back complete, set brakes. Brakes are set, disconnect, show me the pin out front. Thanks for the push. Um, if we have the same amount of likes as viewers, we'll do compressor stalls on takeoff, but that's uh, only if we have that, so. Magic Barrel Ref Key is done, 2991. We got an interesting pack situation going on here. Delta P is sky high. What's up with that? Are we gonna pop? We're turning into the submersible, the Titan submersible here. How high is this going to go? Condition cockpit duct temp overheat when duct temp reaches greater than 70 degrees, hot air off than on. Okay. Hot air off. Then on. I think this is a bug. I don't think. Phoenix traffic, what? American 480 is coming out of the Alpha Terminal. Uh, we're taxing 25 right via Charlie. That Bronco. fixed it. Well, sort of. We'll continue on. Let's, uh, we're gonna do our cross bleed uh, right here. So, well, we're gonna cross bleed. Sky Harbor traffic, uh, American 357. We're doing a cross bleed start here in the alley of Bravo, uh, Bravo Alley, Sky Harbor. All right, let's go ahead and just uh, cross bleed over number one. We'll see if it fixes itself. Can I get off this airplane? 
Gene R. Uh, you and me both, my man. All right, before second engine start, let's go ahead and configure for cross bleed. APU bleed is off. Engine bleed supplying engine, that's number two, that is on. Uh, cross bleed open, it is open. When clear to start, clear of obstacles. For IE V2500, adjust for bleed pressure. Supplying engine must supply a bleed pressure of 30 PSI before start indication and at least 25 PSI during the start. If thrust required to obtain the appropriate engine bleed pressure exceeds 40% on one, pay particular attention to surrounding area and cape air. All right, after that, uh, apply the normal engine start procedure. So that is all set up. Let's go ahead and try a number one start cross bleed. So ignition mode to ignition start. Apply bleed, supply bleed, bleed pressure. Normally I split the throttle, what about one throttle width? About 36% and one, we got 36 PSI, that's associated, clear air. Start engine one. Here we go, we're gonna monitor this one now. Need a little bit more juice there. I wish I would have started the chrono. Monitoring that EGT. time today. Where's she going to peek out at? There's a bus transfer. Now really I could run this engine down since the bleed valve is closed. There's the avail. Engine 2 started. All right, engine one bleed, it's coming on. Cross bleed, auto. Everything looks normal. We'll go ahead and do our regular after start flow. So we'll arm you. Let's go ahead and select flaps three, which is interesting. Flaps three toga out of Phoenix. Air Canada is pushing back. Hey, Captain Canada is flying. I don't know who that is. <laughs> All right. That's good. We're down. Uh, let's go back to our perf. Down point two. All right. Down point two is set. All right, after start checklist, anti-ice is off, yellow electric pump is off, rudder trim zero, after start checklist is complete. Sky Harbor traffic, America 357, we'll be taxing 26 uh, behind Air Canada here in the alley. While we're sitting here waiting, let's minimize uh, everything else we gotta do. Let's do our flight control check. Full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, neutral, rudder, full left, full right, neutral, First officer would do his checks. Max, takeoff config checked. On, auto, auto, T-A-R-A. -A. Terrain on ND is coming online. And now we wait. All right, if you honk like a geese, he will call you a tabernacle. <laughs> is that you, Gustavo? I bet that's Gustavo with there. How often do you conduct a flap three? Whenever it tells us. Um, not very often, so I'm thinking it's bugged. Why no PTU sound when engine two was started? Uh, well, we started engine one 
uh, on the crossbleed. Now you probably would uh it would have been inhibited because I think the break was set. Or no, we went backwards. Either way, I'd have to. Yeah, I don't think it would have went off um, because the break was set and the masters were split. Now once we moved the master switch, it would have gone off. But you don't hear the PTU from up front thrust set. So if I was in wing view, it probably you probably could have heard it. Uh, but in the cockpit, you never hear the PTU. I mean, I think I heard it one time on a 319, just an ever so slight faint in the background. Uh, but with the cockpit door shut, you're not going to hear the PTU up front. doesn't matter if you're in a 19, 20, or 21, especially a 20, 21, not going to hear it. Concerned about the cabin pressure. Let's double check. Cabin pressure is normal. So that normalized itself. That's good. I am a little concerned why our... Oh, that's why. <laughs> I'm over here like, why is this still on the engine page? A silly Airbus pilot trying to pretend you fly the A320. Why is my engine page open? It's bugged. This airplane's bugged. So that was definitely, that uh, was a bug. On All right, here we go. Taxi lights coming on. Hey, uh, from uh, JetBlue, uh, 799 departing 26, uh, Firebird 1, Phoenix. Phoenix traffic, American 480 is lining up, 25 right. Uh, we'll hold for some spacing for the JetBlue. Phoenix. Brake check, pressure zero. The sounds in the cockpit, I will say this. The cockpit sound set is perfect. I hope they don't change it. The volume levels are perfect. Everything is pretty good. Traffic, traffic. Speaking of, well, it wasn't a TCAS, but so last night we had a landing memo come on at 33,000 feet. Can anybody tell me why that was normal? So like we have our takeoff memo right here. Why would I have a landing memo come on at 33,000 feet and it'd be normal. There goes that jet blue. Oh, look at that. Off into the sunrise or sunset. It's like he's stalling. You were landing on Everest. Nope, was not landing on Everest. Yep, Pascal hands, plane underneath. So we were right on top of another aircraft. And as we descended, so we were at 33, and they were at 31, and we got descended to 320, and the controller even said, hey, you got someone directly below you at 31. So we descended at 32, whatever the altitude was, we descended to 1,000 feet above, and right there we had, the landing memo came on for like five seconds. I was like, look at that. I was racing them. We had the uh, drams, and like I wanted to make sure, my, we, I had them locked in on the TCAS so I could see his ground speed. Had to be back to Atlanta. We did. FS Pilot, thank you for the twenty dollar super chat, man. Thank you. Just want to support the channel. I learned so much from you. Phoenix B two is next level. Hey, FS Pilot, very kind of you. Appreciate that. I agree one hundred percent. Phoenix B two is next level. Looking forward to this school up, school up, school up. Hey, thank you, Logan Aviation, for the five dollar super chat. Appreciate you. So we are pretty light. She's tapped, not using any thrust. Very, very realistic. At what point would you get a TARA on that? Uh, closure rate on that one. So uh, we were well within the proximity bubble, Anthony Teal, but it had to do with the, proc the closure rate. So because I knew he was directly below me, and we also, if I didn't know he was directly below me, we would have had a, uh, we had ATC told us, I just used a vertical speed at like 400 feet per minute to just trickle down. There's our cabin ready memo. Cabin ready, everything is good to go. We already did our checks. We're going under the bridge in Phoenix Sky Harbor in the Phoenix. I feel like we need to play the national anthem right now. That looks amazing. This is the uh, BMW AMG World Sim Phoenix Sky Harbor. Too, is taking off lap three normal? Yes, it is normal, but not as 
frequent as I believe we're going to get with this current uh, perf data. I find Flaps 3 out of Sky Harbor Toga a little sus. Remember, I don't know if we can do this, chat, but if we all hit the like button, I will manually instill a, uh, or install, I guess install, instill, I will manually induce compressor stall on rotation. If not, we'll have to wait till Friday, unless it happens randomly, which I don't think it will, because I'm trying to be nice to the engines here. So we'll just call it an even 600. If you hit 600 likes before we take off, I'll do it. If not, we're just gonna roll with what I have primed up. And then we're gonna load something else too once we get it up to cruise. Oh my goodness, look at this. I'm gonna turn the Phoenix nose traffic, a little bit. American 483, 3, Drakes are set. Taxi light is off. All right, little brief on the departure procedure. We're going up on the uh, Firebird 1. Constraint mode is on. Terrain is on. If we lose an engine off of 2.5 uh, right, we're going to continue straight out. We're going to speed up and clean up to the acceleration engine out altitude of 2,600 uh, feet. Traffic Air Canada 115, up 2.5 right, Firebird 1 departure. At which point uh, we'll then uh, level off and uh, get on a radar vectors and come back around. We'll land 2.6. I do have to say, though, kind of getting tired of the airline guys spamming the real pilot on titles. We get it. <laughs> Living the stereotype. Hey, man. Got to do it. I, th I didn't put real airline pilot. I put real Airbus pilot, right? It's a difference. Depending on who you ask. All Airbuses are the same. <laughs> Time to hit the like button as hard as Ryan Air Landing. I don't think it's going to happen. Robinson J. Santana gave us five members to the channel. Robinson, appreciate you, man. Very kind. If you guys pick up a membership, make sure you say thank you. Sky Harbor traffic, American 357. We're going to line up a wait. Two, five, right, Sky Harbor. Wow, look at the sun just peeking through here. Man, oh, man. All right, line up and wait. We're going to all leave the lights set for now properly. Brakes released. Let's go. We didn't do it, so no compressor stalls on this takeoff. That looks so good, though. Oh, man. If you strike the Eric and I have 115 spots, 3,200 climbing 8. Flew! Two, five, right, set. We're gonna give them a little traffic, a little space for traffic. Let's juice up the max lighting right now. This is my favorite, I think this is my favorite time of day to fly. It's still bright, but it's dark enough to where you can see the background lighting, so that's when I juice everything up to max, even in the real airplane, because it just looks cool. I mean, how awesome, how awesome. Look at this. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Is this real life? Actually, probably be like right about there. You see this runway center line. This is incredible. Tony Johns, I agree. You can feel the nose dip on the oleo strut more for sure. All right, here we go. Sky Harbor traffic, American 357. We're departing runway 25 right on the Firebird 1 now to the west. Sky Harbor traffic. All right, we had a lot of new members today. If you are a new member, smash down that yoga button yoga's in chat we'll do this takeoff uh well we'll spool them up 50 from right here because why not spool them up 50. we need to get our lights forgot our lights we'll do it from inside view yoga's in chat here we go Oh, baby. Mantoga SRS, auto thrust blue. 
Well, I never adjusted my rudder pedal sensitivity. I need to do that. 80 knots, thrust set. Oh, I'm just kidding, thrust set now. V1, rotate. This is with SDS, linear curve. I like that. Positive rate, gear up, fly with. Are you kidding me? That was the juiciest takeoff fly with we've ever had. That was the juiciest fly with we've ever had. All right, thrust reduction from window view. <laughs> I'm just smiling ear to ear. Thrust climb, climb, nav. There's F speed, flaps one, speed checks. Flaps one. See the airplane pitching up? Oh, you didn't see that, but I felt it. I had to do a little bit of pitch down there. That is so real. I'll see if I can do it again here. Right when we hit S speed, I will immediately go flaps zero. And that's sometimes, that's really when you get that little pitch moment. So right at S speed, I'm going to go flaps zero, speed checks, flaps zero. I should pitch down a little bit on there, right there, it's all good. You really feel it most from that flaps three to one. That's awesome. Right at green dot. Goodness. Air pack one overheat. Pack one off. Interesting. Pack one off. Pack overheat out. Pack one on. Oh my, let's fly the airplane here. We're single pack right now. And the Firebird 1 takes you further south than I anticipated. All right, I don't see an overheat indication. So let's go ahead and select pack 1 back on. No fall light, okay. That seems fine to me. Let's get back and fly the flight director. Let's fly this out. This will be a good departure here with uh, speed out star, dials and a level off. Okay, that's interesting. Air pack one overheat, pack one off. Out star. We're gonna leave pack one off for right now. We'll get the autopilot on. AP one. Full screen cam. Oops. Let me check something there real quick. Um, oh, I want it. We just hit a hell of a little turbulence there. All right, we're accelerating. We're through ten. Let's get these lights off. Not exceeding the speed limit. We're at 10 thou. We're all right. Let's try it one more time. We'll go pack one back on. If it does not remedy itself, then we're going to go single pack. So let's go ahead and continue our climb. We're going up to three, two, zero. Thrust climb, open climb. From engine view. That was a weather change. Yeah, that's probably what that was.
that spool down to climb power is almost as good as a 7.5 in real life. Nutshell Pass, Big D, good to see you, man. I tell you what, I haven't been on a 7.5 in a long time. Uh, but from being in this exact seat many times, that is, I mean, it's real. The sound set is very good. Okay, we definitely got something going on here. Let's take a look at this. Pack one overheat. All right, pack one. I'm going to keep it offline now. Let's go ahead and pack one's coming off. Uh, we're going to clear air. We're going to leave pack one off. In op systems, pack one. So we'll deal with that in a second. Let's finish our climb flow. We're at a 10,000 feet. Our lights are set. Let's come down here to the McDo. Let's do proper things. Let's go ahead and copy the active. Uh, Radnav page, I'm going to clear the PXR VOR. That's out of there. Progress page, we're going to put San Diego in the prog page, 247 miles. Com 2, we need to put Delta Ops. Oh, they already have Delta Ops preloaded. Awesome. 122.8 for Unicom. And we're at a 14, climbing 320. Cruise out through to 320. So we're looking good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit you guys. I'm going to go, i tell you what, we're going to turn the cabin off. I love, I have no problem with this cabin. I like it a lot. I love it. But I just want to see more engines. Ah, I want to see that for right now. I love the cabin view. On release day, we gotta focus on the engines. You guys look at this engine. I'm gonna look at uh, I'm gonna look at the procedure for this pack one overheat. See if there's anything else we can do. Double D worth. Good to see, man. Just did my first departure with the IEs. Actually blown away by the engine sounds. They've outdone themselves again. I couldn't agree more. The engine sounds on this IE sound set are phenomenal. I would not. The only thing that I would change, because <laughs> we always have to change something, is I feel like the startup sounds are quiet from the wing view. That's it. I feel like they're a little bit too quiet. But I actually, I mean, from the cockpit, they sound great because it's pretty quiet up there on engine start. But I don't know. Someone who's been on a, who sat next to this seat here recently can tell me. But as far as the cockpit sounds, everything else is just the best. Okay, so we have an air pack one, uh, pack one overheat. Let me see if I can pull something up. Pack one, two, overheat. Pack affected. Off. On. Uh, pack affected on. in op systems. One pack. If pack not recovered. So it is not recovered. So pack one will stay off. One. Single pack. Now we have to look at uh, equipment. This aircraft, we're uh, equipped to go. We don't have any limitation on the uh, single pack. Uh, well, actually, 32. We do. We're going to have to drop it down to 300 just because the tail number that I have in my book is it can be very dependent on your status so we'll set two nine or nine or two and we're gonna have to adjust our cruise altitude we're gonna go at three zero zero now so three zero zero is set cruise altitude three zero zero for single pack operation have to set up a uh, message to dispatch let them know hey we've had pack one overheat we've shut pack one off and we're gonna go ahead and leave it uh, as is Let me see something else here. <laughs> Abnormals, air, bleed false. Oh, those are all good. Okay. What causes a pack overheat? It could be several things, Bomb Tech, but most likely it's the sign of a pack going out. Uh, like it's just getting ready to be replaced. Uh, I've had uh, bearings, like the bearings in the pack, like get super hot and they like smoked out. We had smoke in the smoke or fumes. You could smell it. And so we isolated the pack. I did that a couple of years ago. But um, and then we had, because we had a pack, then we got a pack overheat. So we started smelling something. And then within minutes, we got a pack overheat, isolated it, and made it, made it and said, yeah, this pack is smoked. We got to reset it. So that was a technical term. I, as far as engineering, I don't know. <laughs> I really wanted to look up where is the reset system reset table. You can't engage your autopilot, Team Vodka. 
Uh, Team Vodka, check your side stick settings um, in the McDo. You might have some configuration stuff that you need to do. Uh, if I, if you go to, uh, let's see, McDo maintenance, no, McDo config, and check your controls, arrow right, side stick, check your null zone here. Maybe you need an additional no, a null zone because it might be sending an input which would inhibit the autopilot from engaging. Oof. Emergency divert to SLC. Oh, you, you had an autopilot issue as well? You diverted to salt? Really? Oh, in the sim or in real life? I'm trying to see. I don't think we... I know we have a, a, a reset, but I don't think we can do it in the air. And I don't think it would apply to this particular pack. No, that was the uh, avionics system. Disregard. So that is not there. Let's do All right, let's do something fun here. So let's say we're climbing on out. I did notice that we have a vibe over here, 4.5, but we're still in the green. So we're climbing out, everything's hunky dory. And let's dig into our failures box here. Actually, it looks like, I think we might have had, okay. Interesting. Maybe I've turned that on by accident. So we definitely do have a pack of one overheat. We've isolated it. That's not what's gonna apply. What I wanna do next though, is I wanna get to the FWS. Uh, Cause I wanna show y'all something. Why don't I have a navigation fault? I don't know why that's on there. I'm navigating just fine. Well, these ones are messing. So there's our APU. We know about that. We start faults. FWC. So you're flying along, mock out star, and you get this. FWS FWC1 fault. All right, that's, uh, that's a flight warning computer for those who are unaware, FWC1 fault, okay. Well, we just leveled off here. Let's do our regular airplane stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and turn terrain mode off. We're out cruise. It's a smooth ride. We get the seatbelt sign off for right now. Uh, everything looks good. We got another 80 miles to uh, our ETP. Let's diagnose this. We got an FWC F1 fault. What can we do? Well, we can go to our EQRH and or the first thing you're probably going to want to check is what I've been raving about since I saw it in the video, the system reset table. So we have one. I have one that I have pulled up on my iPad, my real world iPad, and I'm gonna pull up the one in the aircraft here. Uh, brakes, no, not brakes, so I gotta find it. It's, uh, uh, nope, nope, let's keep coming down. Calm, fat freezing, nope, ECAM data link. Is it alphabetical? I think it is. ELAC pitch fault. Ooh, I've actually had this one. On ground only, not authorized in flight. I've actually had this exact one, ELAC 2 pitch fault. Yeah, I remember having that one. Oh, I've also had this one, aileron servo fault. Now that I'm scrolling through them, I'm starting to remember. Spoiler fault, don't think I've had that one. But what am I looking for? We're looking for FWC. So we need to see if it's in here. There it is, FWC 1 2 fault. Okay. Well, let's diagnose how to run this system reset table. Now, for those that are unaware, I want to, you know, brief overview. What am I looking at? So I went to the uh, pilot brief. Will it save my page? I hope so. You go to your pilot brief, documents, 
and QRH. QRH stands for Quick Reference Handbook. Uh, used to have QRCs, Quick Reference Card. Uh, QRH, though, is a little bit more hefty than a QRC, and it's all digital, makes it really easy. Now, in real life, every QRH is tailored specifically to the equipment on that specific tail number. So if your fleet is grouped into multiple uh, systems, like they have each air, like a couple airplanes have this system and then some airplanes have additional mods. Everything has got to be grouped. So the first thing foremost, you got to make sure you're at the right QRH with the right tail number. Now, our EQRH or electronic QRH is very simple. You put the tail number in before you start your flight and it will automatically pull up the proper system reset table for that tail number. Well, it takes all the guess, not guesswork, but it just eliminates that extra step because I've had to sift through QRHs before when we were all paper and you had to find the right tail number and it became a pain in the butt when you started having a multiple fleet type. So um, that has all now been eliminated with the EQRH, but uh, in the sim world, it doesn't really uh, matter. I think we pretty much all have the same uh, systems uh, modeled here on the Phoenix. So this is, we know this is correct procedure and we have to diagnose first if we are authorized to do the reset on ground or in flight. This is crucial. Do not just come here, okay, oh my gosh, I found my fault. I'm gonna go do this, pull, blah, blah, blah. No, if you start doing on ground procedures in flight, you might end up crashing the airplane because it's happened before. Not necessarily crashing, but there's been some crazy stories about issues where crews attempted to do resets that were not authorized on uh, in flight. So very important that you differentiate on ground and in flight. Uh, I'm gonna actually read this, see if it matches mine. So on ground, pulled and push circuit breaker, uh, F1049VU. This is exactly, wait 50 seconds and then in flight, pull, push. This is almost, I mean, it's basically verbatim. This is a real system reset. This is so freaking cool from Phoenix. I love this. All right, so we're gonna ignore on ground. Let's go to in flight. Uh, we need to pull, then push the circuit breaker of the affected flight warning computer. For flight warning computer one, it's the F01 on the 49VU. I'm gonna scroll down, make sure there's nothing else additional, and there's not, and I can tell that before because it was, we have the solid line here, but whenever you have a procedure that's on the edge of the page, just make sure you scroll down and make sure you don't have another step down here that you're gonna miss and it's gonna screw you up. So make sure you have the whole procedure whenever you have a procedure that's at the bottom of the page like this. Um, but right now we know this is the end of procedure and we have FWC1 that's faulted. So we need to find the F01 circuit breaker on the 49VU. Where is the 49VU? Ta-da! So we have the 49VU on the overhead and we are looking for Foxtrot 01. Foxtrot 01. So 1 through 14. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way up to H, A. So Fox 01, F, W, C. Now this particular reset says push or pull then push. So we're not gonna wait 50 seconds. And I wonder why. So let's pull and push. If that does not reset, well, then we would have, we'll just have to clear and we'll have to write it up. So we have an FWC1 fault. Um, I don't know if there's a way to actually set the failure so it's resettable. Let me look at that real quick. Cause I'm going to be full force. You need to approach Google Zero Eight. Phoenix International Airport. American Two Four Six Six. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we'll just unfail it. We'll simulate that. We reset it, and now it's back to normal. Now we still have a status message because we have. Uh, cat, uh, or cat three single with pack one in on. So, all right, we've reset that. That is fine. Now that I'm off work, take you those. Hey, AJ, good to see you, man. Would you ever do write ups on systems that did reset successfully? No, that's a good question. So, our procedure is we only put in the book or we only write up uh, system resets that specifically mention do a reset uh, or do a write-up in the logbook. Some do, some do not. Um, and if the reset is unsuccessful, so like in our case before I unfailed that, if it just stayed on, we'd clear the uh, caution and we'd leave it 
in op and we would write it up in the book said a reset uh, unsuccessful and FWC one in op so and then maintenance would come take a look at it on the ground I feel aspiring pilots are living in the golden age watching real pilots run through scenarios like this for free on YouTube so cool hey man I'm glad you guys enjoy it all right so now let's uh, we're approaching our destination let's see if we can pull some weather real quick from uh, does it work over here now let's get our information uh, Phoenix my flight uh, weather and then we're gonna load up something for San Diego all right 280 at 7 30 at 6 nice night 1 8 so 280 at 7 knots 18 degrees 3 0 0 6 boom and uh, let's take a quick barrel ref there going into San Diego approach localizer 2 7 and the minimums it's an MDA so we got to add 50 680 let's call it 730 in the barrel we'll have our LS push buttons on even though we're doing localizer no slope if we have no slope we're gonna turn the glide slope off so glide slope mode has now been turned off on or inhibited beautiful all right someone had a great suggestion about doing some sort of brake failure for San Diego and I think that's a great idea so let's come down here and with power plant oh you know what oh if I have time let's see if we can find a good break one first and then I want to show y'all where would that be doors info systems I want to show y'all what I had uh, landing gear auto brake failure We're going to arm that for below 30,000 feet. All right, so that's armed for below 300. So we'll deal with that on our arrival. So that's primed up. Let's take a look at our power plants here, our fancy power plants. Let's do a engine surge. What the hell? Let's do one of those below. Oh, no, that's a, um, that's a, is that a compressor stall? Yeah, we don't want to do a compressor stall right now. <laughs> can you stack failures? Uh, yes, you can. But I wanted to do an engine, oh man. Reverser pressurize unlock. All right, let's do left channel A. We'll arm that for below. Actually, no, let's do that for after time. Let's give us cells uh, 120 cells. Give ourselves two minutes. Apply changes. Let's see what happens. Because we're still trying to get to San Diego. All right, we're flying along. IE engines are looking juice. Engine surge? Don't mind if I do. I don't. I don't know if that's a. Uh, I think I want to say that's a compressor stall. So I don't really want to do that just yet. We got to save that for the juicy stream. All right. Well, we already got something else. We just just popped up before that. Brakes. Auto brake fault. All right. I didn't anticipate that one. I thought that was going to be below 30,000. Okay. Um, let me look it up. Good practice for me. Brakes. It is not even on this abnormal. So let me go to. So it's not on any of those. That's interesting. Brakes. Auto brake fault. All right. Clear brakes. Auto brake. 
Well, that was rather benign. <laughs> we don't have auto brakes. And you can't arm them. Go figure. whoop de doo We have to do manual braking. Okay. That was kind of that was kind of lame. Surge at 400 feet. I sound pretty quiet. This stream came out because I'm reading and I have to turn away from my mic like this and actually read my iPad. So when I talk into the microphone, I sound like this. But when I have to look over here because the microphone's in front of my face and I'm looking over here at my iPad, I sound a lot more quiet. Who needs brakes before going to San Diego? Let's before we uh, we might do ins and surge on final. If we can hit. 550 likes before TOD. I'll make y'all a deal. Because I kind of want to see it. Our top of descent is in 18 miles. If you hit 550 likes, I will auto prime an engine surge at 400 feet. Oh, that's even higher. That, that, that might be the, that might be, yeah, let's do like 300, 200 feet. How do you compare this to the Tolis after V2, B2? Randy, save that question for when we do our single engines on Friday. Unless we inadvertently end up in single engine today. Before I make a definitive statement either way, Randy, I want to make sure I put this completely through its paces. This is only my second or third flight on the block two. I need a little bit more time, but I will answer that question once I feel like I've gained enough uh, experience in the block two. So... But thank you for the support, man. Ten months. Appreciate you. Josh FSD, thank you for the six months. V1, I'll be going through Atlanta on Monday. Ew. I'm sorry for you, man. Going to MCO on Monday. Uh, let's see. Monday, I believe I'm off. I worked this weekend. I got a turns on Saturday. Let me check my schedule here. I don't think I work Monday. I don't. Uh, work Saturday, Sunday. I got a couple turns, and then uh, I'm off Monday, Tuesday. I got to start prepping for another fishing tournament coming up. So, all right, let's take a look at this company message. Fail a thrust reverser, Haas. <laughs> all right, AAL ops delay card. Yep, we're late. Blame it on the FO. Five hundred and forty-one likes. Ooh, we're so close. You have five miles, chat. We need nine likes in five miles. Nine likes in four miles. You can do it. The screens are really dark. Miles Johnson. Uh, the screens are dark. I don't think they're dark. Do you think they're dark? Uh, I bet if I lower this, it'll brighten them up for you. A little eye adaptation. That's, that's probably more realistic anyway, just like that. 552 likes. The single engine performance depends more on the sim than on the plane, doesn't it? Um, the single engine performance depends more on the sim than on the plane. Yes. Uh, you mean like the performance of the simulator, like being able to hold, you know, like model single engine flight? Is that what you're getting at, McCallum? Oh, Dave's got a good one. Dave, are you, are you like the Phoenix, Dave? Like the Dave that does the editing. I think Dave did editing. Are you the Phoenix, Dave? I want to see memory loss items for braking. I'll tell you what it is. Brakes release. Uh, actually, no, it's reverse full. Brakes release. Anti-skid. Nose steering off. Brake supply. Uh, monitor PSI. 1,000 PSI. If that's not working, seven successful applications of the parking brake. <laughs> All right. Decelerate. We need to start down. Boom. Here we go. Three zero zero. That's not going to work. What do you think this is? An A330? Let's set, uh, let's set 10,000. Manage. Thrust idle, descent. We're spooling down. Flashing vibe readout? Crow, what are you talking about? We had a flashing vibe? I didn't even see it. That would be the high vibe that I had. So we've got high vibes on number one. I noticed that on takeoff. So I was hoping we were going to get an e-cam thrown. I didn't know it was going to be advisory only. If you notice that... Um, Yeah, I didn't notice that, though. But if you noticed it, instead of ADV up here, that would have been advisory. So we've got issues with our number one engine. We've got a pack one overheat. We have higher than normal vibes on this engine. And we also hit 550 likes. So you know what that means? That means we're going to go failures. We're going to go... And we'll make Dave happy, too. What the hell? Let's go... Uh...
What did we say? Left engine surge. Arm failure above and below. What is AMSL? Above mean sea level? So San Diego is sitting at... Yeah, our vibes went away, so that's why we cleared the engine page. Zero, so let's call it above mean sea level. Let's say above 300, but below 400. Is that how you do it? Enter. Or after, no, we don't want that. Above 300, below 400, mean sea level, armed. Apply changes. You guys are loading me up on this one. AJ Funari, thank you for the $5 super chat, man. I appreciate you. If you're going to crash into San Diego, please don't crash into the Honeycomb headquarters. The Charlie pre-orders people will never get their money back. Oh, my gosh. AJ, thanks for the $5 super chat, my man. Christian Neckers gifting five more memberships to the channel, making everybody green here tonight. I appreciate you, Christian. Very kind of you. If you picked up a membership gifted from Christian Neckers, please do say thank you. Very kind of him supporting the channel like so. All right. Well, we got no auto brakes. We've had an engine sir or hidden vibration on number one. We got a pack one overheat and in op now. So let's go ahead and start compiling everything together. What, to me, I'm now thinking threat levels, right? We've got obviously something that's happening with this number one engine. Go through the uh, aircraft logbook. Is there any history of this engine having any issues before? Is there a previous history of engine vibrations? Sometimes, depending on the airframe, they'll be tracking engine vibes because it, one engine has a tendency to have a high vibe and that's just a maintenance watch item. If that's not in the book, then I know we have something rather peculiar happening on this specific flight. So I'm gonna keep that in the back of my mind, maybe monitor those engine instruments a little extra closely Make sure we're checking all of them, not just our EPERS, not just our N1s. We're just going to make sure everything's symmetrical. What are my temps doing? Keeping everything a little extra, paying a little extra attention to everything. All right, we're out of 18,000 feet. 29097 is set. Seatbelt sign is on. And let's see if we can do a braking, loss of braking. What the hell? Let's see if we can do it. Uh, where is braking? So I don't want power plant. Ice and rain, pneumatic, landing gear. I don't know how I would do that. Right main landing gear, not lock. Nose gear, not lock. Gear safety. I don't think I can program that one, Haas. Brakes fault. I don't think I can do that one. But I'll tell you what, let's simulate a uh, flat tire. Main one, arm, can we do it after landing? Boom, apply changes. We're gonna, we have a flat tire. We're gonna see if we can uh, see what that seems like. Hydraulic power, hydraulic leak. Engine one pump, electric pump. Just arm that one up for fun. All right, we've got quite a few armed. Let's keep on trickling down. With thrust idle descent, we're slowing down to the speed 270 knots. Getting ready to go past helix between 12 and 15 thou. Yeah, the screens get darker when I move that uh, sunshine out of the way. Slowly puts his parachute on, GNR. We do have a lot of things pro programmed. Look, we got an engine vibe again. Oh, no, we didn't. I thought this was illuminated. When you get an advisory, the engine page will come on, and it will stay on like this, and you have to clear it manually. You won't get an actual ECAM on an advisory only. Ask Pratt & Whitney how I know. I think you can fail one, two, three, and 4, and that ought to do it. Well, then we wouldn't have any. Would it be wheel brake fault? It would be a wheel brake fault, Ryan. But I don't know. Okay, well, that's the other one. Was I have control? You can't action. It's hydraulic green engine one pump low pressure. Green engine one pump low pressure. All right. Green engine one pump off. Engine one pump off. 
All right. Clear hydraulic. Clear hydraulic. Now, it's very important that you monitor this system here because you don't want to be leaking and PTUing at the same time. All right, so our PTU is on. Let's see if we can hear it. There it is. You hear it in the background? I don't know if you're still here, but you should be able to hear it now. All right, let me look up. What was that? Hydraulics? Let me pull up my uh, normal EQRH. I got to be quick here. Green. Low pressure. That's green and yellow. Nope, we don't have green and yellow. I don't even have that one on this EQRH. Are you serious? That San Diego, just 799, 10 miles for 27. San Diego. So let's go, let's clear that. Hydraulic green low. Uh, hydraulic green and yellow. Engine one, blue, yellow, green and blue system, new pressure. No, it's, a, it's green plus something. If there's nothing there, it's nothing. yellow low level and system low PTU off so if we have a we don't have a low fluid let's double check monitor a hydraulic here our fluid is holding so we're not leaking but we're running that uh, PTU more drag required all, right, all of this is happening while we have to still do our localizer in the San Diego so that's always fun let's go ahead and select 250 knots with 250 knots selected, we'll activate and confirm as we go through 10,000 feet. And we are descending. Let's go ahead and set 8,000. Let's come on down. So we'll pull for open. Thrust idle, open descent. Into the sunset we shall go. Man, this looks so nice. We're holding fluids. Phantom typed the issues on his EFB and he is working because it says you have... Network Phantom type the issues on his EFB and he is working. Wait, what? And he is working because it says that you may have network connectivity problems. What? <laughs> what, Gustavo? I'm confused. Can you quickly see if your 8 ears alignment is also marked? It is marked, Mike's basement. I did already notice that. But our 8 ears are fine. I think that was from the initial, like when you power up the airplane and the eight ears are off. I think maybe that's why that's there. That's just a guess, though. All right, we're leveling at 8,000. All right, we've got a lot of people coming in. I don't want to, let's go ahead and reduce the 210. Let's slow this down even more. We'll do the slippery speed, 210 knots. Look at that view. Let's get the rest of our lights on. Oh, yeah. That is a thing of beauty right there, ladies and gentlemen. If only it was a 319. Oh, my goodness. Look at that shot. I think Gustavo got into the leafy stuff. <laughs> he is in Canada. What happens if you don't activate approach phase? Um, if you if you do not fly through the deceleration point and you go manage speed at the final approach fix, uh, you'll accelerate to 250 knots. So if you fly through the decel point, then it will automatically activate the approach phase for you. We're speed alt star. We're slowing at 210 knots. We need to descend down to 5,000 now. Let's go ahead and descend 5,000. And we're going to keep flaps one. Actually, let's let's see if we have an approach idle here. So we are idle. Twenty nine point four percent and one. Let's go flaps one. Approach idle. Look at that. So that is why I tell new guys on the bus like, hey, two hundred and ten knots. Don't just go flaps one to help you descend because you're just going to hurt your descent rate, actually. 
If you just stay at flaps clean, flaps zero, you'll have a better rate of descent. So now with flaps one out there, I gotta get a little speed brake action because we've got that approach idle. And it does make a difference. With flaps one selected, we've noticed our lower ECAM has populated our current failures. We got auto brake, pack one, green engine one pump. So I'm telling the FO, I'm like, hey man, we got something going on with this airplane. Uh, I'd like to make one approach. If we have any other issues on our approach, uh, we'll probably bug out and go to Los Angeles where we have a longer runway. Without auto brakes, I'm fine doing manual braking, but now that we have a green system uh, that's not pressure, the green engine pump is not working, it's still pressurized via the PTU, so we're still gonna have normal brakes, but I would be slightly concerned with the fact that we're going into San Diego. I look at our gross weight, 128,000 pounds, we're still really light. Um, see, traffic, this one's 142. Uh, uh, so we got, we're, we're plenty below that. So speed brake, that's on me. But it's just stuff to throw out there. You want to talk about it. You know, you're assessing the possible risk and you're trying to see what happens ahead of the game here. Are we setting ourselves up for some sort of failure that we could remedy by just going to LA or a different airport? But right now, with the way we're set up, we're lightweight, good runway conditions. I have no issues attempting an approach here into San Diego. There's nothing broken right now on the airplane that would cause me to uh, do a diversion at this point. Uh, I'm curious though, we never, uh, we don't have a rival perf. Well, we do have a rival perf. San, uh, five, two, seven, apply METAR, uh, landing weight, manual, low auto brake, medium auto brake, max manual, or do idle, no reverse, auto thrust off, flaps full, braking system, anti-skid, auto brake fault, that's on there. Hydraulic system, we don't have that. Green and yellow, everything is good. Our, everything's pressurized, so we don't have any of those faults. Uh, flats and flaps, engine system, no. So let's go ahead and, how does one calculate that? San Diego, runway 27, apply. Am I, am I drawing a blank here? How do you apply or like activate this? Oh, landing weight. Shoot, what are we? We have to put that in manually. 128s. 128 decimal 2. There we go. Plenty of distance. Wind's 280 at 7. We got a 7 knot headwind too, so everything looks good. Ooh. Alright, we got way. We're getting high here. Let's go 3,000. Let's start slowing up. We got to go gear down. I see that traffic in front of us. Gear down. Spoilers on. Get flight recorder ready. San Diego traffic, American 4 clear. This might get spicy, so I'm going to start the recording now so I don't forget. Recording is active. San Diego traffic, American 357. We're on a 13 mile final runway 27, San Diego. All right, VFE next minus 10, flaps 2. What's the difference between good and dry? Uh, double D worth, it's. Uh, I forget the technical term. We always, always use good though. Someone, Gustavo, Gustavo, get off the grass and what's the difference between good and dry? Flaps three. We'll get ready to go max juice here. Uh, actually, yeah, let's go autopilot off. Flaps full. I remember trying to fly the airplane. Do juice view here. All right, we're gonna go flight directors off. Flight path angles on. Flight directors off. Let's start coming down. We're gonna leave it in uh, auto thrust. I have control. We're high on profile. I am correcting. Traffic in sight. Runway in sight. Descent rate's gonna probably go uh, exceed 2,000 feet here briefly. But we are. We're still within the slot here. We need to be Rebo at or above 2,000. We'll be well above that. But inside our Rebo, it's more than three degrees. So I got to pick up that descent right here. Not a true proper low approach, but it's fine. We're VFR, not VFR. We're visual with the runway. So, all right, manual brakes. We also have some Juicy's uh, program for approach here. So this ought to get interesting. Aviator Nick, a $20 New Zealand super chat. Appreciate you. Juicy seeing the IAEs on stream. Can't wait for the next IAE streams. Hey, Aviator Nick. 
appreciate you, man. Thank you for the support. All right, do you guys want... I'm going to leave the Airbus cam off. I'm going to leave the throttle tech cam off so you can see the engine indications. I hope we don't have to go around here. I would already screwed this up. All right, we're going to accelerate. We're going to go past uh, probably 2,000 feet per minute here, correcting. I'm going to close this profile gap here. All right, landing checklist, cabin crew advised, auto thrust, speed, auto brakes are off, ECAM memo, landing all green, landing checklist is complete, high on profile, correcting, descent rate is going to be at 2,000, keep you aware of that, we are correcting. A double ground, a go around would be an added bonus though. We might have to. This is so juicy. It's only 5.45. I don't want to stop. I want to do another leg. Ooh. 1,000. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. 1,000 feet. We're stabilizing. 1,000 feet stable. Clear to land. Magic bill ref checked. 3003. Lost that traffic. I think he cleared. Hundred above. Five hundred. Minimum. Insight yeah, landing. You have to go to the actual airport soon? Alright, where are you going, vodka? So no engine surge, I guess. <laughs> well, that was lame. <laughs> 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. Ooh, a little too much. Five. Boilers. First green. Second. Tire pressure low. Right. Oh, you can feel it. Whoa. Is it dragging? I feel like something's dragging. Wheel tire low pressure. All right, clear the caution. Let's clean her up. Definitely hear the PT running right now. I tell you what. Oh. Is that a slope? I think that's a slope. Let's uh, kill our lights. I got an idea. I think y'all might like. We're not done. The night is young. We're not done, chat. Let's bring it on in here. Wow, you can really feel that oleo strut in the front. <laughs> Got idea. Uh, I think 320 is right about there. Oop. Brake set. Don't like. That's a tire. They misspelled tire. I'm actually curious if uh, that would be. Oh, it's in our nose. Our nose gear has low tire pressure.
Interesting. All right. Uh, so we're on the gate. Now, this is... We know this... Think about this for a second. If I shut down number two first, what's going to happen? Green's going to depressurize, right? If, or I'm sorry. Yeah, green will depressurize because yellow is no longer going to be pressurized, which will no longer pressurize the PTU. So then normal braking will be lost when I shut down the number two engine. Therefore, we got to double check, make sure this accumulator is in the green, make sure we do have uh, pressure for the parking brake, which the brake is set and indicating properly. So uh, what we can do is we will shut down number two. Now, I will uh, go GSX. I'll piss off. <laughs> no, I don't. Let's go to weight and balance, ground serviches, GPU connect, external power connected, number one, coming offline. Ladies and gentlemen, at 600 likes, you have earned yourselves a second leg. And we're going to continue this uh, train wreck. We'll go short. We'll go nighttime. We'll stay, we'll stay with it. We'll go up to... Uh, we wouldn't really go to SFO from here. Maybe LA's too close. We might... We'll see. I'll look at the route map. Listen to that. Well, I'm just... The night is young, and I don't want to stop flying yet. And we've already got a nice slew of mechanical issues going on. We'll add to that. We'll fix it with maintenance here, what we can. Beacon light is off. Now let's bring GSX over. San Diego Burbank? Ooh. All right, uh, operate the jetway. Will you bring it over? By AccuFleet. Cool. All right, so they're gonna bring it over. Let's do proper shutdown. We've never done this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save that replay is uh, V2, B2, KSAN landing. So we will watch all the replays at the end of the stream. So that replay has been saved. We did kind of float it out a little bit. Um, now let's do a proper shutdown. So tank pumps are coming off. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, everything looks normal. We'll reclose that ditching push button guard there. Seatbelt sign can come off. Uh, no smoking. That's going to stay in auto for a through flight. And we'll come down here, reset the time. We got to call maintenance. Uh, we have chocks. Uh, commence deboarding. Deboard. Our chocks are in. So with our chocks in, I'm going. Yeah, I'm not going to release the brake because I think that'll mess with it, won't it? Let me see. If I release the brake. Passengers deboarding starting. No. Okay, cool. We can release the brake. So we drop the brake and we are deplaning for a second leg. Uh, let's see here. All right. Anyway, uh, Aviator Nick, though, I do appreciate you, man. I know you got me there right at the last minute on that approach. But, um,. Appreciate the $20 super chat, man. Welcome back to SFO. Uh, let's see here. As we deplane, we have a company message. I want to, I'm going to play. I've got, I have an idea in my mind. I, I want to get it done. I don't want to get distracted. So let me get through all this arrival message. Beautiful. All right, cool. That's done. Let's uh, say goodbye to the folks. Why can't I unlock the door? Can't unlock the door. I'll go. Wait, what? Oh, it's because our cabin's off. That's interesting. I didn't know that's how that worked. Huh. Goodbye. Wow, they already deplaned everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. Let me look at the sky vector real quick. I'm gonna find a good route. We're either gonna go K San K B U R. San Diego Burbank's 100 miles. San Diego L A X is 95 miles. I tell you what. 
since I just, uh, well, I didn't just do it. Let's do an in-flight. We'll set it up for, um, let's go LAX. Well, how about this? Let's plan for a short hop to Burbank, but we'll have, some, we'll set it up with a failure to cause us to divert to LAX. I like the sound of that. So, we are deplaning. Everything's gonna stay the same. I'm gonna refile the fly plan. I'm gonna call maintenance. Maintenance is gonna come aboard. They're gonna assess the situation. And uh, yeah, it'll be a fun second leg. Christian Neckers, thank you for the support. European bedtime. Hey, I know it's getting late for a lot of the viewers out there. So I do appreciate you all that tuning in from all over the world and it's getting late. I appreciate you. We're gonna continue rocking. Hopefully you like the first two streams today. But uh, I'm not done flying the V2B2 yet. I want one more leg. One more leg tonight. Uh, off tomorrow. Hit it hard on Friday. So uh, I'll put up the Be Right Back screen. We'll do, um, I say it's only going to take me about five to seven minutes to get everything set up the way I want to. But I'm going to do it with the screen up so you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. Get a drink. Pour yourself a fresh uh, bourbon. Actually... Is XP72 stream tonight? Gosh, I hope he's streaming. On, oh, he's on Batson, though. I was going to say we could we could crash his party. Because um, I'm sure wherever he's flying into, it'd be fun to crash his party. But he's on Batson. All right. I will be right back. Give me five to seven minutes. Stretch your legs. And uh, I'll see you right back here, chat. Here we go.
All right. We back. We back. No voice. I know. I had him muted. I had him muted. We're back. All right, Cap. Uh, just took a look at your logbook. We serviced that nose tire. T Y R E. We got that refilled for you. We took a look at your green hydraulic uh, engine driven pump. I think we fixed it. Uh, we just, you know, redid some of the, uh, we took it apart and put it back together. Everything looks fine. Ops check normal. You shouldn't have any issues. So I want to deboard crew know we're still on board. So that has been completed. So let's go ahead and request boarding for the next flight. Uh, but anyway, Cap, yeah, we took a took a look at your green hydraulic engine driven pump. Ops check normal. We'll sign that thing off in the logbook. We did put some air in that nose tire. Uh, you should be all set to go for your flight to Burbank. We couldn't fix the APU, unfortunately. Uh, we lack the, uh, we're just short staffed tonight. So Southwest is uh, driving us crazy over there. So we got to go back and do some stuff because we're contract maintenance. So that wouldn't make sense. So we just didn't do it because we're feeling lazy and we're doing a shift change and we don't want to fix your APU. So no APU still, but uh, we did get the air in your tire. So you're good to go to Burbank. Have fun. Um, oh, yeah, auto brakes still don't work. We're waiting on a part from uh, Thailand that just, you know, the COVID supply has got it backed up. So um, we don't have the part for that. Auto brakes are still in up, but you still have max manual braking. You should be fine. Cool. Send it. Not a real mechanic. They wouldn't pass up a chance to say you blew a seal. <laughs> Not yet, AJ. All right, so there is your maintenance uh, debrief. Um, pretty realistic. <laughs> That's similar to how they go most of the time. Uh, so yeah, they fixed one thing, everything else is still broken, and they basically turned off and turned it back on, and we're good to go. So we are going to Burbank now, that is our plan. Short flight, only 100 miles. So let's get to plugging away here. We're already boarding, let's do an init request. Let's get that pulled over. Yeah, I know, Haas, that's why I switched it. I was like, yeah, no, that wouldn't make sense if they were working on our bus and then having to go over there, so that wouldn't work, so I, ch I changed it. It's just shift change, they didn't want to deal with the APU. They're gonna fix it tonight in Burbank. They're going to fix it tonight at Burbank. So we're continuing on American 357 cost index. Uh, we're going to keep it actually a little bit lower, 15. Our cruise flight level is super short. We're only going up to uh, 20,000 feet. That's in there. Uh, open cargo. I think they're already open. They're doing their thing outside. Oh, no. we got to open them up again for you guys. So let's do that. Let's go here. Let's go back to weight and balance. Um, I'm going to load instantly, not with GSX, and we're going to go, nope, ground serviche, forward and aft cargo is opening up. So they're going to do their things. <coughs> Love that little wiggle waggle there on the door. All right, we'll also get rid of the FPV. All right, let's finish our flight plan here. Super short flight, San Diego, Burbank. You guys are getting the life of a real Airbus pilot here. Departure, 27. Seaward 2 is what we're on. Seaward 2, going to LAX. I accidentally left the music on. I kind of like it in the background. Y'all like it? We normally don't do turns. I'm going to leave it on for turns. Uh, going into Burbank, ILS, uh, why do we have, what did we file? 2-7 in Burbank? There's no 2-7 in Burbank. Let's pull out our super speedy charts here. We'll sync route, we'll get the new one. ILS 8, right? That's the norm. Yeah, ILS 8 Burr is what we normally do. ILS Zulu 8. ILS Zulu 8. No star selected. Approach via, though. We're going to take it from LAX. Cause I think that's where we're going off of, right? Yeah, LAX. Silex. So Silex transition is what we want, which we don't have. So we'll come off LAX VOR. Insert that. Let's take a look. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go to plan mode here. Yep, that actually looks good. LA, boom, Silex, procedure turn. 
procedure turn in the box. All right, flight plan's in the box. Secondary, we got to initialize it. LAX, oh, I'm sorry, not LAX. KSAN to KSAN, LA is an option if something were to happen though, but San Diego, plenty of runway here. If we're on fire especially, come back to San Diego. Uh, secondary, perf, arrival, low to seven. Secondary, perf, approach phase only. What was it, 530? Close enough in the barrow. Zero out the winds, winds are light and variable, 280 at something, 17 degrees, beautiful night. Magic Barrel Ref Key 3003. Man, the Phoenix is running smooth on this block too, y'all. 3003 is set in the secondary. Nothing to hard tune. We'll put S-A-N in here. I kind of want to get a McDo now. Everything is so snappy. All right, init page two. Fuel on board 11, 11 required. So let's go back to the departure perf. No, I'm sorry. Weight and balance. Send that to the McDo. 12.2 and 11.1. .1. Fuel tank pumps are coming back on. Engine one pump is coming back on. Typical mechanic, he forgot to turn the uh, overhead switch back on. So, that always reminds me. Let me do another flow here, make sure nothing else is messed up. Everything looks good. Oh, glide slope mode, I'll get that off. That looks good, eight ears are aligned. Can we do a quick align on this thing? Let's do it. Eh, 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 eh. Does this thing have quick align? A couple of load sheets here, except. Except. Done. Position invalid, that's normal. GPS primary, maybe it didn't, let me see, let me go data, position. Ah, it is, I guess it is doing it, here we go. You can have a McDo on your phone or tablet now? Carol, I know, I forgot about that. I've got my iPad sitting right here. It would be a good idea. I might have to do that, Caro. All right, quick align completed, beautiful. All right, so we're just waiting on perf data. We're loading up, we got no APU, so we're gonna have to, I'm gonna reconfigure right now. Packs one, oh, let me make sure, oh, we're single pack two, so pack one is gonna remain off. I don't think we ever fixed that. Pack one will stay off. I'm gonna open that up. We're gonna configure everything for a ground air start because we already did it once. So we're through flight. We're a well-oiled machine now, this flight crew. The song's kind of a vibe. Can I, will I bother you if I play it again? Maybe not all of it. Maybe the last, like, minute. I just wanted to vibe to this song outside in drone cam. Hold on. Why they load bags at night. That's pretty juicy. We'll listen to the last minute of this song. All right. Let's go over a quick departure brief. Through flight. Y'all familiar with the engine now, procedure, San Diego. If we lose one, we're going to go straight out over the water. 1,000 feet, speed up, clean up. We'll come back around. San Diego is an option, depending on the state of the failure. Um, if short of being on fire, though, I'd like to take it to LAX. Much longer runway um, and just a little bit more room for air. You know, it'll have a full-blown approach. We don't have to do a localizer, even though it's visual. Um, so depending on the type of emergency or engine failure, I'd like to go to LAX if we can. Uh, but San Diego's in the secondary. It's good to go. Uh, we'll be underweight for a return should we need to go. Uh, if all else goes as well, though, we'll go up to our cruise altitude tonight, 20,000 feet short flight. Uh, then we're expecting the ILS Zulu 8 into Burbank. I'll kind of brief that right now. We'll do the procedure turn at Silex, and then uh, we'll do an approach in. We do not have auto brakes, but landing on runways less than 6,000 feet. We'll go ahead and comply with our procedure, which will be max manual braking anyway. So max manual braking, um, depending on your SOPs, you may or may not be able to go into Burbank with the auto brake um, deferred. You might have to do medium brakes only. I know uh, there's a couple runways in our system that if the auto brake is not enabled or it's deferred, you wouldn't be able to go there. So 
Um, we're going to just play the game. We're going to say that we're, we're allowed to dispatch. We're aware of it. Uh, we're going to use full reverse. We have to be down on the first third, and we have to do a full, um, I already said that, full reverse thrust. So that's all set. Um, that's your approach brief and departure brief. It's a very short flight. It's going to be very busy. Um, so, yeah, any questions? No questions. I'll have terrain up on my side. We've got no weather to worry about tonight. So that's all good. Somebody said L.A. Center is on the line. That might be spicy. Let's take a look at the web eye. I veil web eye. L.A. Center is online chat. Okay. Twenty-five eight. Let's give him a call. I'm not using Mini FCU thrust set. Um, I believe Mini FCU has, to, or they're still they need they need an update for the native integration with Mini FCU. So I don't have Mini FCU yet, uh, on. I could run it like I did the before, but I just didn't want to plug it in and take the time to do it. So. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to our charts, Navigraph. I love how snappy this thing is, man. So awesome. Departures, we're on the C word. Pin it, let's give him a call. LA Center, good evening, American 357 on the ground in San Diego. I'd like to pick up our clearance to uh, Burbank, please. American 357, Los Angeles Center, greetings. You are clear to the Burbank Airport via the Seaward 2 departure, LAX uh, de transition, and Dennis filed. On departure, climb via city, except maintain 5,000. Expect uh, 1, 6,000 feet. 10 minutes after your departure, your departure frequency is with me and Squawk 7271. All right, clear to uh, Burbank. See where to departure, LAX transition as final. Climb via SID 5000, 16 and 10. Departure with you, Squawk 7271 from American 357. American 357, your read back is correct. Call when ready for taxi, and you can expect runway 27 for departure. All right, we'll expect 27 for departure. We'll give you a call ready to roll, American 357. Thanks. All right, as filed, let's come down here. Let's put our squawk in 727-100. Man, I hope that guy is a fan of the channel, because if not, that is the most epic <laughs> transponder, random transponder code. 727-100 in the box. Uh, we'll leave it off for now. Actually, altitude reporting, put it in standby, though. So that's good. Radar PWS should have been off. Look at the af after landing flow. The FO totally screwed it up. Um, that's all good. We're done loading. Let's do a departure perf. Oh, one last thing. He said 5,000, right? 5,000? Yes, 5,000 is set via the SID. I'm going to reset our flight directors. Dash, dash, 5,000, 5,000. Speed select is red because it's scary. We don't have our departure perf in the box. So, 27 dry, sync final. Uh, whoever said that about what's the difference between uh, 6 and 5, one is with good friction. So I can't remember, like, good friction or something is, like, six. Uh, for the most part, though, I think we always default to five. I want to say that we, like, we default to five pretty much. Um, just for, like, to be on the safe side of things. But that I just, it just hit me randomly. Okay, flap optimum, force toga. Yep. Anti-ice off, packs on. Sync live, calculate. 23, 24, flaps three. Let's do flap two. Let's recalculate. Flap two out of here. And we'll send to McDo. Flap two, down point two. Flap two, down point two. 26, 30, 30 is set. All right. Cockpit to ground. Ground to cockpit, go ahead. Just to confirm, we're going to be starting engine number two. Uh, all hoses clear. Uh, copy to ground. Roger, stand by. Uh, we'll give you a call when you're clear to start number two. Roger. We are ready to receive ground air up here when you are ready. All right. So let's go back here to the ground services. I'm going to go. We're going to have to do manual pushback again, though, so that's fine. 
Let's close up that door. Close up the cargo. Beacon's on. We're waiting for the ground crew. Yeah, Gustavo. Um, that it does seem to give you three all the time. So you're right, Gustavo. It's a bug. Ah, oh, wrong side sim in the house, my man. Yes, wrong side. What's the difference between our cam six and five? Isn't one ground friction? Something like that? There's our clearance if I forget it. There's only an ocean ahead, flaps one plus F. All right, fine, Gustavo. Why you gotta be so demanding, man? Gustavo's always coming in here, ruining vibes. Since I can send it to the McDo, though, I, that's so much easier. <laughs> 22, 35, 35, flap one, down point two. 22, ooh, what? 32, I misread that. 32, 35, 35, flaps one, no flex. Down point two, check, all right. Uh, we need to get the other one set up here. McDo Atsu. Nope. McDo Config. Nope. McDo Maintenance. Ground Service. Ground Air. Cockpit ground, you ready to receive ground air? Cockpit ground, A affirmative. We are ready to receive ground air. Cockpit ground, oh, Roger. Starting air now. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. All right. 48 PSI. We'll clear on two. Clear on two. Starting engine number two. Let's do it from... Should we do it from more... I think it would be more bassy if I go back here. Starting two. <laughs> you guys like that noise? <laughs> you lost it. <laughs> There's the PTU uh, thrust set, so you can definitely hear it from back here. Amazing sound. <laughs> 10 for 10 on the huffer sounds. Hey, I got a 10 for 10 out of Gustavo. My life is complete now. <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking about my sounds. So now... What is happening here? Oh, she's motoring down. Look at that. Quick turn, baby. Damn it, I gotta have to start starting the chrono. I'm gonna need fractality. Are you here? I need you to make a script so that when you start an engine within 30 minutes, you automatically start the chrono. <laughs> I need an FO, I need an FO script from Fractality because I keep forgetting to start the chrono. We don't know how long the starter's been running. So if we were to have a start fault at this moment, I don't know how long that starter's been running. Well, I'm just going to add 20 seconds to that. So let's call it 40. We say, well, whatever that timer is, we'll just add another 20 seconds. That's why you always want to start the chrono on that initial start over. You'll make Boris homeless with such great sounds. <laughs> look, look at the EGT. She's really motoring down. There goes the fuel. Here we go. Ignore the pressurization. We know that's a bug. So a real easy way to tell on the IAEs and really any engine, is your EGT outrunning the N2? No. N2 is ahead of the EGT. Even if the EGT is just a little bit ahead, it's fine. Where you have run a risk of a hot start, you can really see it coming when that EGT starts to outrun that N2. So if you see this start spiking and that N2 is lagging, probably gonna hot start. Uh, wrong site says not much with friction, just breaking action six dry, five good, four good. So yeah, that's what, what we were trying to figure out. What's the difference between dry and good? Like what makes good? So I guess dry would be obviously dry. Good with five is not dry with good friction. I don't know. All right, we got a good start on number two. Uh, let's go ahead and request the ground air disconnect. All right, ground air disconnect. Mm. 
Alright, check the electrical page. Oh, that's why we check. I forgot to do it. Confirm. It's confirmed. Copy the ground. You're good to pull ground power. Good to pull ground power and error. Copy that, Cap. Alright, so GPU is coming. The air has been pulled. I don't think it'll let me. Let me see if it'll do a pushback. Nah, it won't let me do pushback with the engines restarted, so whatever. Alright, uh, we'll pull our own chocks and cones. Oh, shoot. Set the brake, brother. Brakes are set. You didn't see that. All right, we're going to do a cross bleed. So pack one, pack two on. Engine two bleed on. Wait for that to pick it up. Boom, there's the load. We are set. And oh, look. You hear the engine spool up a little bit to take the load on the pack? I heard it faintly. That was awesome. Okay, that's going back to there. And let's go ahead and push back. Copy the ground. Uh, are you ready? Standby cap, we gotta disconnect the jet bridge. <laughs> I'm actually a good air unit, thank you. Uh, pack one is not in op, Steve, uh, Stavaros, we fixed it. N or no, you're right, it is in op. Sorry, you're right, thank you, uh, I should have left that on. That I need an MEL sticker. Clear pack one, clear pack one, that was my fault. There would be an MEL sticker up there. Wrong side sim. Send me some MEL stickers. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and start going backwards. Brakes are released. Backwards. Why are you dinging at me? Look at that. Uh, BKG Blueface, I recommend SDS on. What we will try, uh, should I try a little bit of a curve? I will try a curve on this flight. As soon as we finish the pushback, I will, I will put in that 20 curve, negative 20 curve. But I'm only gonna do it in pitch. That looks real. Look at that beacon flash. Are you serious right now, man? That looks absolutely real. All right, we're gonna straighten the nose wheel out and stop. Cockpit the ground, we'll push complete, set brakes. Brakes are set. Triple indicator, check. Push back complete, clear disconnect, show me the pin out front, thanks for the push. All right, departure perf, we don't need that actually. We'll put our uh, Navigraph up. We're going to do a cross bleed here in the alley. We're going to go night charts. Uh, seaward to RNAV. Uh, we're also going to kill the dome light. Oh, yeah. Actually, we'll go. Uh, wow. Look at that night lighting. This is going to be fun. All right. So let's do our cross bleed right here. Uh, engine one uh, receiving bleed is off. Two bleed is on. Cross bleed is open. Pack one is off per the MEL. Seatbelt sign should have been on. We never did a before start checklist. Oh well. All right, let's go ahead and cross bleed over. So ignition mode to ignition start. Get our throttle tech cam on here. We're looking for 35 PSI before the ignition of the start sequence. We know this is bugged. We'll clear that out. Now it's probably going to motor at 229. So I'm going to reset the kroner. The kroner. Starting one. Hit the chrono. Auto brakes. Auto brake fault. That's associated. Clear brakes. Clear brakes. That's part of our MEL. It scared me for a second. I thought I said normal brakes. All right. So we are motoring on the cross bleed here. Look, the EGT actually went up. You see that? Look, the EGT is going up. I should try to trigger the pitch call out. <laughs> I see you departed without your sticker. Please return to the gate. <laughs> Reauthorized under release ID 01. Thanks, wrong side. Hey, did you get, to, did, are you home yet, wrong side? Did you get to give this airplane a shot yet? 
You're gonna love it, man. If not, are you working tomorrow? I'm doing a, a DFW in the PM. And then I only have another day off. I feel like I'm working too much. I'm gonna stop all this working. All right, there goes the fuel. Keep an eye on the EGT and the N2. So they're about equal, like 248, 25% N2. So right now I know I'm comfortable that we're gonna be just fine. Watch when we start to get the light off. There's the light off. See the N2 is ahead of the EGT. N2 is remaining ahead of the EGT. We're gonna be just fine. We're in the alley. I'll wait for the uh, bleed valve to close. Be around 50% S, 44% N2, cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring number two back. We don't need it anymore. SD, uh, name howitzer. The SDS is very subtle and I feel like it's very subtle, but it's subtle enough. It kind of reduces that initial speed at which the airplane moves. There's our avail light. We got two good starts. That's going to go back to the normal position. Engine one bleed, auto cross bleed is coming on. Spoilers arm. We're doing flaps one because Gustavo got mad at us. Flaps one's coming down. Does the EGT rule go for most? Uh, yeah, Airbus 737. It's And remember, it's just a very rough rule of thumb. Most jet engines, you can tell, or I'll say this. I'll say it this way. A telltale sign that you may overtemp on engine start is when the EGT starts to rapidly outrun the N2. That is a telltale sign. Now, it doesn't happen every time. Well, I mean, it will happen if you have an overtemp. At some point, it will outrun the N2. Um, I mean, unless you have a tailpipe fire or something else like that. Which, that could that trigger an EGT with a low end tube. But anyway, it's a sign. All right, we got two good starts. Flaps are set. I do want to set, let's try the curve. So real quick, we're going to go with the suggested minus 20. So far, I'm really liking, that's not what I want. I want controls options. I'm really liking the linear curve, but we're going to go with what Amir says, and we're going to go minus 20. We're going to give it a shot. I do like the SDS on. Uh, but let's put, wait, why is that on? I don't want to be getting, uh, I just want this on view switching. I don't want my yoke giving any inputs. Uh, Tiller, all right, right here, Hotas Warthog. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call it Phoenix. Amir's recommendations. So, now I'm going to go sensitivity, and they said minus 20, right? I'm going to do that in, uh, really? All right, minus 20. I'm not going to mess with roll. I like roll, but we'll do minus 20 in the pitch. So we'll see if we can notice any difference. Let's turn these screens down. Let's turn the dome light off. Oh my goodness, look at this lighting, Chad. Let me turn this down. Let me turn this down. That looks pretty good. I gotta turn these down. I gotta turn I gotta turn on the dues down. Flight plan page, perf page. The glow off the screens. Like you can see the glow on the screens. I love them. Let's turn this PFD down. Let's turn everything down. We'll get into night mode. We'll get cozy mode here. Oh, yeah. I did need to adjust the rudder. But that's all right. Uh, let's do auto brakes, max, takeoff config, checked. On auto, T-A-R-A. -A, that's good. Rudder trim, or reset, zero. Flaps one, spoilers armed. Uh, flight controls. Oh, we disarmed the spoilers. There they go. Full left. Full right, rudder, full left, full right, point two down on the trim. Auto brakes are blue per our MEL. All right, let's give them a tech call. LA Center American 357 on the ground of San Diego, ready to taxi. American 357 taxi, runway 27 via Bravo, hold short at Bravo 1. 27 via Bravo, hold short, Bravo 1, American 357. 
Also, American 357, please squawk mode Charlie. Squawk mode Charlie, American 357. Uh, altitude on, we'll turn that on. Should be on mode Charlie right now. I'll recycle it for him. Yes, in the event of an RTO, it's a manual. It's a manual brakes RTO. That would be a briefing, and that would be part of the MEL. Uh, wrong side had a comment up there. For the difference between 6 and 5, FCOM states estimated surface friction. Nothing for 6, good for medium. So they left the surface friction value years ago. Okay. So basically, 6 is the best possible runway condition. Thank you, wrong side. Appreciate you, man. All right, auto brakes are in op. That would be part of our brief, yeah. And in case of an RTO, manual brakes, full reverse. We're going to stand on the brakes. Wing lights plus wing view. All right, we wouldn't do this on the ground, but what the hell. It's a sim. <gasps> oh, my goodness me. Look at that light on that leading edge. Woo Look at that. You can tell it's spilling out from the fuselage. Hold on. It's, you can tell. Oh, man. Thanks for the extra juice there, Caro. Pac-Man, massive $20 super chat, dude. Thank you. Says, wasn't able to catch uh, much of the streams today. Can't wait to watch the replays later and learn a few things. Here's to some good bourbon and more B2 fun. Hey, Pac-Man, thank you so much for the $20 super chat. I don't think we're going live tomorrow. I gotta go. I have a report time about 1 p.m. Eastern. I don't get back till around 8 p.m. at night. So if I'm sprightly, I might put out a pre-recorded video. Probably not. But we did two streams today. Y'all can watch. And then Friday, be a friend, tell a friend. It's Break of Phoenix Day. And uh, it's going to be juicy. It's going to be juicy. So... That'll be our break everything, V1 cut, single engine, stall spins. It'll be fun. That's your favorite thing from all the visuals? I mean, that's that's pretty, I, I love, right here from this view is just perfect. Now, I'm curious, let's see if I can not go off the taxiway here. If I go like this, can I, oh, and you barely get, look at that. Yeah, you can barely see that tip on a 320. 321, forget about it. 319, you can see it pretty easily. Phoenix Friday. Oh, yeah, okay, Chase B. I'm, you know, we might even double up on Friday. We might do like an 11 a.m. Eastern, break everything stream, and then we might do, oh, I don't know if we, nah, we won't, because I got a report time early on Saturday, I think. Let me check. What time's my report time on Saturday? Um, Saturday... Yeah, 8.40 in the morning. Nah, we won't double up on Friday. We'll just do the break everything stream. Those typically last a while anyway. All right, we're going to hold short at Bravo 1. There's not much terrain out there, but I'll put it on anyway. Because we're... If we have to turn back, there's terrain, but going out over the water, not much. Some higher alt manual flying today? Some higher altitude manual flying? Show us how it handles? Uh, well, we'll see. I've got some... I've got some little tidbits programmed right now. If you're just tuning in, we've had... A select amount of failures on the way into San Diego. Nothing crazy, but we've been having issues with our engine number one. We had an advisory vibration. We had a pack one overheat. And we also had a green engine driven pump go out on us. So we fixed the green engine driven pump. Uh, the pack is still out. Our APU has been deferred. We've had to do two cross bleeds, two ground power starts. So... We have issues with this airplane, but we're trying to complete the mission and finish the day with a night landing in Burbank. Gonna be spicy. 
Do you ever boop the rubber spinner? Oh, American of course. 357, runway 27, winds are 281, uh, correction, 280 at 6, runway 27, clear for takeoff. Runway 27, clear for takeoff, American 357. Oh, yeah. Do you even do a, if you don't touch the rubber spinner on the walk around, did you even do a walk around geographically inverted? Oh, my gosh. Look at the, <laughs> the night lighting is so sweet. We got to do more night flights. I know I normally don't like flying at night, but the lighting, seeing this lighting at night is just refreshingly awesome. Look at that. All right, chat. We're going to do this one from the cockpit. We haven't done a single one from the cockpit, so let's keep it in realism mode. I will turn up the sounds a little bit. We're cleared for takeoff. 5,000 is set. Lights are set. Yoga's in chat. Spool them up, baby. Here we go. 1.05 Eper. Mantoga. Oh my gosh. SRS runway auto thrust blue. Those sounds are perfect. Thrust set. 100 knots. Check. V1. Rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Nav it. Maintain one six thousand American three fifty seven. <laughs> thrust climb climb auto thrust sixteen thousand and pull it thrust climb open climb S speed flaps zero half takeoff checklist. AP-1's engaged. Keep an eye on those vibes. Reset the chrono, start the block clock. Should have done that on takeoff. Look at that. That thrust reduction is Perfect. Perfect. It's amazing. Now, I did, I thought I had something programmed for on takeoff there. I guess it didn't trigger. I'm a little disappointed. We did have a high vibe again, though. Pressurization is normal. From Mexico 236, Los Angeles Central greetings. The sounds are so good. Los Angeles Central, I don't go 236, ready to copy IFR back to Guadalajara, Mexico. And yeah, with information, India. Ejo, Mexico! Sometimes we make it, sometimes we don't. You are clear to the Guadalajara Airport via the Laxman departure Mission Bay transition. And then it's filed. On departure, climb 5,000. Expect flight level 330. One zero minutes after your departure. Departure frequencies with me and squawk 7335. All right, there's 10,000 feet. Lights are coming off. 
I'm going to leave the wing light on though because it's way too cool not to leave it on. What are CFMs? Never heard of her. All right, at 10,000 feet, we're going to go secondary, copy active, rad nav, nothing, progress, KBUR, perf data, everything looks fine there, fuel, 7.5, headed to Burbank, we're doing our cruise climb out here. That's slightly concerning. Auto brake. Let's look at that hydraulic again. What's up with that? Let's see what happens when I get up here to 16th thou. It is. We haven't got an e cam, but it's at the limit. Speed Alt Star. This man is single handedly winning the IAE CFM battle in favor of the former. Yeah, I've been telling y'all for years. CFM is king. Alright, I'm gonna turn the sim down a little bit. Interesting. Why? Oh, I can't even see my... I need a light. What's the left out L? Does this work? It does. All right. Uh, let's go here. It won't give us a green failure. It stops right above the line. I'm trying to fail the green system here. Hold on. Failed apply. Okay, there we go. Okay, we got some work to do now. All right. That's what I wanted to happen eventually. Because we've been having issues all night with number one. And now we've got a hydraulic green reservoir low level. All right, let's uh, run through the ECAM first. PTU off. PTU off. That is to prevent any loss of the yellow hydraulic fluid through the PTU, depending on the nature of the failure. Green engine one pump off. Green engine one pump, it's back off. We had issues with that on our first leg. We've obviously lost it completely now. Ops check normal. All right, green engine one pump, low pressure. Green system, low pressure. Wheel, flight control. Clear hydraulics, clear hydraulics. All right, uh, normal braking is lost. Auto brake is out per our MEL. Status. All right, stop status. Let's figure out what we're doing here. Let me pull up my EQRH. 
and we need to go green system. Let's run through this. Uh, we don't have any of that. So I cannot believe that's not part of the EQRH. How is that not part of the, it can't be right. I gotta be missing something here. Um, all right, so let's go back. FM, let's search. Hydraulic green. Uh, let's see. In-op systems, we have green hydraulic, spoiler 1.5, cat 3, normal braking, auto braking, landing gear, retract, reverser 1, pack 1, green engine 1 pump, yaw damper 1. All right, uh, gravity extension, pack one. But the normal braking, that's the biggest one for me right now, especially since we're going to Burbank at night. I can tell you right now, that's not gonna happen. Um, so, hydraulics. Briefing should include. All right. Let's brief through here. We'll go status, landing gear, gravity extension. We're gonna have to do gravity extension. Pack one, when pack overheat out, that does not apply, but it's already, we've preferred that. Landing distance procedure apply. Alternate yellow braking with anti-skid. Slats flap slow, cat two only. All right, clear status, clear status. And we would go to the comm. We've already, I've already got my comm up here. I'm looking at our current position, so. I'll tell you right now, we're not gonna go to Burbank. We need to set up a diversion to Los Angeles. Uh, we'll be talking to dispatch, uh, talking to maintenance control. They're gonna tell us the same thing. We're gonna need to get an amendment from wrong side SIM, tell them, hey, we need to go to Los Angeles tonight. And uh, then the next thing we have to do is, uh, why does it say LA? I want, uh, well, I not have actual charts. I wish I could, uh, I guess I can't put another alternate in here, can I? No. All right. But well, let's, uh, let's see if we can get a diversion planning with him. LA Center American 357. American 357, LA Center. Yeah, we're working on a hydraulic problem here. Uh, we'd like to declare an emergency at this time, and we would like to set up a alternate destination and divert to Los Angeles. American 357, check your emergency. Uh, descend and maintain 10,000 if able. And uh, you can expect the ILS for a runway 25 left. All right, we'll expect the ILS 25 left, descending 10,000 American 357. All right, so we're gonna go here. Uh, actually, we're gonna go I think it was our, it was our, oh, that's uh, LAS. There's a couple ways you could do it. I'm gonna put LAX here. That doesn't really matter though. Let's do a change of destination. So new destination, KLAX off the L2 key. That's gonna go here. I'm gonna insert that. Los Angeles, we're going to ILS 25 left. No star, approach via The long, I want the full one. Let me go. I have to look at my real world charts here because I can't pull LAX up on the EFB, which is unfortunate. 25 left. I want to take it out all the way out there towards. American 357, Cebu. turn right, uh, heading 350, direct to Seal Beach VOR. It's going to maintain 8,000 now. All right, descend and maintain 8,000, and a right turn heading 350, proceed direct to Seal Beach for American 357. All right, 8,000, thrust idle, open descent, 350 on the heading to get us started. I'm gonna insert this, and then I also wanna put Seal Beach in there now, because that's where we're going. 
We're going to go direct to SLI. I want the one that's closest to us. Execute. We're nav into Seal Beach. I'm going to slow down right now as well. 250 knots. And while the first officer is working on the additional FCOM procedures, we also have to fly the airplane. So let's go through our approach phase. I'm going to activate and confirm we're in selected speed. The current barometer is 29 or 9 or 7. 29 or 9 or 7. Temperature is 1 0. Winds are calm, 0 for 0. The barrel, looking at my EFB, 304. 304, that is set. We'll put our LS push buttons on. LS push buttons on. I'm going to hit the EMER call button for the flight attendants. There it is. Alright, then I'm going to turn it off. Yeah, what's going on, Cap? Hey, we have an issue with our hydraulics right now. We're going to proceed to Los Angeles. We should have you on the ground here in about 10 minutes. Um, I don't have any special instruction for you, and I don't anticipate to use the brace command. But yeah, we just lost our green hydraulic system, so we don't want to land this airplane in Burbank with a short runway. We're going to go to L.A. we got maintenance there, a longer runway. Weather's nice. That's the plan. Um, we'll update you if everything changes. Cool. Sounds good, Cap. I need the test info. There you go. Um, and no specials. All right, cool. Big Sierra, thank you for the $10 super chat. You threw me off, man. I was hearing the ding dong when I pressed the Emer call button. I'm like, why is it still going uh, or going off? So Big Sierra, appreciate the $10 super chat, man. Appreciate you. And Center for America 357, uh, we're going to request a long final. Any chance we can uh, get uh, direct Sivu uh, and then set up for that full length ILS 25 left? American 357, roger, uh, turn right, direct Cebu, and uh, stop your descent. All right, right turn, direct Cebu, and we'll level off here. It's going to be uh, 1111,000 for American 357. Speed, vertical speed, zero, roger, 11,000. So 11,000 is now set. I'm going to make it look normal. Let's just go ahead and... Uh, get it back into out mode. So we're speed out 11,000. We're RNAV into Sivu. That's going to give us more time here for the arrival into LA. But uh, a big seer again, thank you for the 10 uh, gifted memberships, man. Very, very kind of you. All right. Let's get our landing data. we got to run through this here. We have our arrival perf. We're going to change this LAX. Apply the METAR. Uh, our current gross weight is 130.6, 130 decimal 6. We'll enter that. And we're landing ILS 25 left. There we go, 12 knots of headwind. Now we need to go American 357, we're auto brake fault. Soul, fuel, and any hazmat on board. All right, uh, standby American 357. All right, let's go back here. We got 120 plus six crew, 126 American 357. We have 126 souls on board. Fuel on board, 8,400 pounds. Uh, no hazmat for American 357. American 357, 126 souls, 800, uh, 8,400 pounds of fuel and zero hazmat, Roger. Sivu is way out there. Yeah, it is, our set, but we need it because we still have to do manual gear extension. Um, and we have slats and flaps slow. So the more time, the better. American Plus, we're also American burning fuel. Copy souls, 126. Fuel at 8,400 pounds and ne negative hazmat. That's a good copy, American 357. Um, so the lot more fuel we burn, the better. But we also don't want to burn too much fuel in case for some reason... We have to go around and have to do it again. We want to make sure we have enough time. So you got to kind of find that balance. You don't want to pigeonhole yourself, but you also don't want to land with an extra weight, um, especially dealing with braking stuff. So let me get back to our braking system here. Auto brake fault. So that is on. Uh, slats and flaps system. 
Uh, we don't have any slat flap fault yet. Hydraulics though, we are green system low pressure. So green system low pressure, that basically means we have alternate brakes. So hydraulics braking system is set. Nothing else is going to be affected. So we still have 7,100 landing distance, 1.15 vac with a margin 8.2. The total landing distance available is 11,000 feet. So that all looks good. We're going max manual braking, no reverse, auto thrust off, flaps full, 130.6. So that all checks out. Our landing data is completed. So now we have, while we're flying out here to Sivu, I need to look up the uh, alternate landing gear yeah, extension. Landing gear echo gravity echo extended echo procedure. Echo six, Do not apply this procedure if at least one green triangle is displayed on each landing gear on the wheel SD. This is sufficient. Uh, well, that's not our problem, though. We have to do it via hydraulics. So... Um, that's why we got to do it. So, if landing gear not down and locked in all other cases, and if time, in all other cases, here we go. Gravity, gear extension, hand crank, pull and turn. So, let me turn on the dome light here to low. We'll take a look at this. What we need to do is we're going to pull this up and we're going to rotate it three separate times. Uh, after the, we're gonna, first thing we're going to do though is actually we're going to put the landing gear lever down. Actually, no, it says gravity, gear extension, hand crank, pull and turn. Rotate the handle clockwise three turns until reaching the mechanical stop even if resistance is felt then landing gear lever down gear down indications if available check the lg ciu2 fault or brake system one two fault alert may be spuriously triggered after gravity extension if successful and then if unsuccessful we have alternate methods so our landing gear extension procedure is uh been reviewed and again, so we're going to pop this sucker out and rotate it three times. Uh, our flat, our slats and flaps are going to be extremely slow on the extension. That's why we're going to give ourselves a nice long final. Our VAP is 133. We'll be config full. VLS of 128. All right. Uh, we're almost to crane. Two, well, we're only seven miles out. American 357, you are eight miles from Seabu. We came present heading and altitude. You are cleared for the, until established, you are cleared for the ILS runway 25 left approach. I want, I want 1000 until established. We're cleared for the ILS 25 left approach via Seabu America 357. All right, so from Seabu, we're not going to arm it, but I will get my light on here so I know we're already cleared approach. So we're cleared approach, we're going to hit Sivu, we're going to make this pirouette, and then we'll start slowing down and looking at our vertical profile for configuring into LAX. Now we also have to make a PA. I don't, can you make a PA? 510 is All right, Mexico 236, squawk mode Charlie, please. Was it the FS Labs where you could press that, it would record it, and then do that. So um, we'll do our own PA here, it's good practice for me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the flight deck, uh, just a little bit of information for you right now. Uh, unfortunately, we've had uh, we've had some malfunctions with our hydraulic system on uh, on one of our three systems on the aircraft. So, out of an abundance of caution, we're going to be diverting to Los Angeles. Uh, the main reason for that being is uh, the runway is just much longer there, and uh, when we have this type of mechanical irregularity. The landing distance uh, can be more of a factor. So, out of an abundance of caution, we're going to choose to go into LA tonight. We do apologize for the inconvenience. Uh, hopefully, once we're on the ground, uh, there'll be a rebooking agent there for you at the gate, and uh, they will see about getting you on a flight over to Burbank. Uh, again, we do apologize for this inconvenience. Uh, we should have you on the ground here in about the next uh, five to ten minutes at this time. Flight attendants, please prepare the cab for arrival. All right, PA has been accomplished. They're preparing for arrival. We're Sivu, we're turning inbound. I'm gonna help the airplane out here. We're just gonna redirect us to Crane. A lot of help with the turn here. I'm also gonna start slowing us down. That'll help. I'm gonna to come to 210 knots. Crane is at or above 10,000. Let's make this turn inbound here. 
Yeah, come to think of it, flying from LA to Burbank is probably faster than dealing with LA traffic. Probably is, Steven. <laughs> Primal Supreme's coming from the game. Rebook, they could just Uber to Burbank. Well, that's not my problem. Right now, I'm dealing with trying to get the airplane on the ground, on the ground with alternate brakes. All right, uh, alternate braking. What we're going to do upon touchdown, we have to monitor our cumul or our brakes pressure. So. Depending on the system that is installed on the specific airplane, you could overpressurize the alternate brakes. So we want to make sure we're at a thousand psi max. You can, ooh, you can see I can go over that. So we have to feather the braking to maintain one thousand psi or less. Or applicable. Three zero zero two. Three zero zero two. America three fifty seven. Thanks. All right, three zero zero two is set. So. We're going to feather the brakes 1,000 PSI. If for some reason we're not getting the deceleration or we have zero pressure upon touchdown, we're going to then go to the alternate braking, which where we're going to turn the anti-skid nose wheel steering switch off, and then we're going to then apply the parking brake. We should have approximately seven applications of the parking brake before we drain the accumulator. If all that fails, hang on to your butts. We're going into the EMAS off the end of 2.5 left. All right, we're uh, inbound at Crane, so let's go ahead and descend to 10,000. We're clear to approach. I'm going to arm it up. We're going to extend flaps one now. Let's take a look at our flaps extension here. Look how slow slats are coming out. That's accurate. That's really cool. Very slow extension here. So we're going to configure early. And once we get her down below 180 knots, uh, oh, Mexico, two, three, six. We Radar will uh, then do our landing gear extension, too. We'll wait till about 180. All right, there's Crane approaching 10,000 at or above 10, our status page. Status. Landing gear, gravity extension. Pack one, landing distance procedure applied has been accomplished. Alternate yellow braking with anti-skid is available. Slats flap slow, cat two only. Green hydraulic is in op. Spoiler one and five is in op. Cat three, normal braking, auto braking, landing gear retraction. So if we're going around, there's gear hanging down. Reverser one, pack one, green engine one pump, yaw damper one. Now, I believe you can re... I don't know if you can suck the gear up alternately. Well, next to go, two, go three, around. Six, I don't believe you can. Left, so landing gear door. retract, the gear are hanging down. Luckily, we're at sea level, though, so that should be fine. Uh, all right, we're level 10,000. I'm going to continue to bring it back to 180 now. We have a nice long final. We don't want to rush this. we got plenty of time. we got plenty of gas. Uh, let's see what the company message is. Let's go here. The two menu add to... AOC, receive messages, AHL ops, yes, uh, also while I'm here, diversion, IKO, KLAX, ETA is uh, 0312 Zulu. Green hydraulic loss, we send that off, we're diverting to LAX. All right, there's 180 knots. Flaps two. Very slow extension. Oh, Fly Live is still doing its thing, huh? All right, Fly Live is out. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I forgot. All right, Fly Live past that. I'm going to set eight. I'm going to keep trickling down. All right. How far out are we from LAX? Let's go Prague. I'm going to do a straight line distance to LAX. Right now we are 30 miles out, so we're not going to hang the gear at 30. We'll probably commence the landing gear extension at around 15 miles. Nobody likes fly life. All right. 
We are looking good. Glide slope blue, low blue cap one. Autopilot one plus two. That all checks out. I'm picturing scenes from Airplane River and a standing up screaming. Landing with abnormal landing gear. I'm just looking at additional. Nope, that's not it. Abnormals. Eight thousand feet. Put those on. We're cleared approach. That's going to stay off until we're cleared to land. We don't even have an APU, so we don't have to worry about any of that. All right, we'll keep on trickling down. Let's set five thousand for gate. Trust idle. Open descent. 5,000 from gate. We still haven't picked up the low and slope yet. We're still so far out. That's normal. I think Microsoft's actually pretty, it's actually much closer in, right? Yeah, 24 miles, we should pick it up real life. But MSFS, I think we got to get inside like what, 20 or 18 miles? There's our loke. Check those hydraulics. PTU is inhibited, so that's what you want to see. You still have good quantities in yellow and blue. Uh, we'll probably double up green and yellow on Friday stream. I think we'll find our, ourselves in a green and yellow failure. That one can get really spicy. Um, but this is what you want here. You're inhibiting any uh, loss of the yellow system. Uh, via the PTU. Even though these systems do not transfer fluids to pressurize each other, green and yellow, depending on the nature of the fault that caused the leak, you don't even want to risk sending the yellow system through the PTU and losing both the yellow and green. So that's why the PTU is manually selected off. We've isolated the green system. We still have two hydraulic systems. The hydraulics are the lifeblood of this airplane with electrical power. We don't need all of that, the electrical power and the hydraulics. And uh, so that looks good. As far as our engine, engine looks good. Our vibes are a little bit higher than normal, but nothing crazy. Our packs deferred, pressurization is normal. Condition is, everyone's a little hot in the back. Let's see, we've got an alternate uh, hydraulics powering the flight controls. Probably starting to sweat up front here, so we're gonna do that. All right, there's 5,000 feet. New Mexico 236, climb and maintain. Let's keep coming to 3,600, and I'm on the same flight route. We're gonna start the alternate gear extension procedure. So let's go ahead and drop it. Three turns. How does one? All right, here we go. One, two, three, to the stop. Landing gear lever, select down. Look at that, and the doors are gonna stay open. They should, looking good. All right. Rotate handle three times, reaching mechanical stop, even if resistance is felt, landing gear lever down. Gear down indications, if available, check. We've got them, that's good. Landing gear doors not closed, 250-60, fuel consumption, FMS prediction reliable, that's associated, clear landing gear, clear landing gear. Status, max speed, 250-60, mock fuel consumption increase, fuel on board, 7.4, check. Clear status, everything is as briefed, clear status. We've got a green triangle, 
and we've got three green up here. So if successful, do not reset the gravity gear extension hand crank. So our gear are fixed down. They are not coming up. We are not resetting this right here. So gear is down. Let's continue. Let's configure all the way now. We're going to go manage speed. Our managed approach speed is 180 or correction 133. We're VFE next minus 10 flaps three selecting now. And flaps full. Glide slope bloke. Go around altitude. Two thousand. We got to punch out and go around. Go around altitude two thousand. We're going straight out over the water. No turns. The gear stay down. We've got enough fuel to try it again. American 357, winds are 24012, runway 25 left, clear to land. Runway 25 left, clear to land, American 357. All right, we are received our landing clearance, crash, fire, and rescue. We'd send the trucks, make sure ops knows, and we're ready to go. So we're going to hand fly this approach as well, because why not? 2,500. All right. Cabin ready, spoilers armed, landing checklist is completed, autopilot is coming off. We'll leave the auto thrust do its thing here. I want to see how this killed two birds with one stone here. We're trying this 20 curve, negative 20 curve. See how it flies. Although it's very stable right now, we got a pretty much solid headwind. Pretty good. Oh, replay. Yeah, yeah. Good call. Replay. Record. I almost screwed us up. The replay is recording, though. Matthew Kelly. Yes, we've declared an emergency. We are heading to Los Angeles. We've lost our green system. We're on alternate brakes. We just did a manual landing gear extension. to do any floaties on this one so we're gonna set her down set her down nice and firm we're gonna let the reversers work we'll feather the brakes nope we didn't change the squat code not required why not turn the PTU on the last minute because if you turn it on last minute and there is a leak on your landing rollout you might just lost all your brakes Alternate brakes are plenty to stop the airplane. 1,000. Thousand feet stable, we are clear to land. Two whites, two reds. I'm thinking I like the 20 curve on here. I'm gonna need more time with it, more stick time, because this approach is really, I mean, just pretty much steady headwind here, 10 knots. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna leave it at the 20 curve, which is the recommended setting with SDS on. But we'll see, I don't have my official verdict yet. Five, I'm good. I'm gonna bring this in just a tad low here, about a half dot. that glide so about a half dot low three reds keep coming down no 
get high there. It is actually a little gusty now to get low. One hundred. Light slow. Check. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Ten. Five. One reverse green. Fighting that asymmetric thrust. Feather the brakes. We do have alternate brakes. I can see them working. 70 knots. Idle reverse. That asymmetric reverse, I'm gonna stow them both. Zero feet per minute. No, it's you know what that probably it wasn't it won't it's not working because the uh, it's got no ground speed. So, America no three five that. seven. Welcome to Los Angeles. Join hotel cross runway two four left at Juliet. And do you have a preferred parking today? Hotel Juliet cross two five right. Yeah, we're just gonna take it. Uh, what is that over there at the Bradley terminal? There we, we don't have anything specific in mind. Roger. Then in that case, uh, via Juliet to Charlie to a parking of your choice. All right, Juliet, Charlie, parking of our choice. Thanks for the ATC tonight, American 357. All right, we'll go ahead and keep them going here. We've got all you're of welcome, our... sir. Thanks for the emergency. I haven't done one in a while. Hope huh. your night goes well. Thanks for the flight. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to practice one of these things. It threw us a curveball tonight. All right, so... Me too. With the uh, hydraulics operating in alternate, I feel confident in continuing to roll. Now, if we would have had a dual hydraulic green and yellow, we would stop on the runway. We're going to go ahead and cross both runways here. On that way, we make our PA remain seated, remain seated, remain seated. We're going to take it in here. I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, I'm going to stow those and We'll leave our lights on. You can see our, look at our landing gear doors are still open. Uh, we'll take it over here and park. Um, but uh, since we already did a shutdown, I tell you what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and disconnect. Controller was awesome. Yeah, Johanna, I agree. We'll disconnect. And I'm just going to stop here. And we're going to go back into replay cam. Cause we already did one full shutdown tonight. Oops. Oh, I don't know what that song's all about. I don't wanna, we don't need sail yet. Um, that is set. Let's run the time back so we can see a little bit better. All right. And let's see what this replay looked like. shot right there all right so we'll look at our emergency first and then we'll finish the night with our uh, San Diego landing so let's get that back into the auto thrust range because we had auto thrust running right so we'll clear that we'll go auto thrust on so pretty neat to see the gear doors open that's always been how Phoenix has had it modeled so we've been modeled correctly that's nothing new the 40 flaps are new though mm -mm -mm. Let's run it forward here. Let's get to the juice. So, green hydraulic failure, as you saw. Look at that nice shot of SoFi Stadium. A single hydraulic failure, yes, it's an emergency. We declared an emergency, but it's a very, of, of a lot of the different emergencies you can have on the 320 series. A green hydraulic failure is one that's not super crazy. Where it gets crazy is when you lose two, or you get a green and yellow, or you combine two hydraulic systems. That's when stuff really starts to get haywire. So, 
And the same would be true if we had just lost a yellow hydraulic system. Or the same would be true if we just lost blue. So you can see here the redundancy in the Airbus is very, very well thought out. A loss of a single hydraulic system, a couple extra steps, we got to lower the landing gear manually, we got alternate brakes. But other than that, and planning for a slow flap and slat deployment, give yourself a nice long final, it's a rather benign emergency as well. Um, just a testament to the Airbus and how it's it's been designed, uh, and even a more testament to the Phoenix team for getting everything. I mean, as you could tell, I mean everything seemed pretty chill on that. No need to rush. Ooh, that actually looked pretty dang smooth in that view right there. Oh. Let's see how that looked on uh, outside view. Go back. See how we did here. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit firmer than normal. Now, when the reverser opens, look at that. Number two opens. The number one does, and that, that flickering, that's the frame gen. Our spoilers, one through five, are not up. Look at that. So we got half spoilers, one reverser, and alternate brakes. All emulated or simulated perfectly there. We we'll resume that. Let's watch one more. Let me reset the spoiler panels. I don't think I can, actually. Trying to reset those spoilers. Go down. Go down, spoilers. They're going down. They're just going down slowly. Yeah, the the wing flex, I, Phoenix has the best wing flex in Sim World. <laughs> AJ. The moral of the story tonight, chat, is that all these failures occurred because we started number two first. That's really what it boils down to. All right, there's the touchdown. Oh, look at that reverser. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. All right, let's stow it. Now we're going to get really uh, interesting. I'm going to stop the replay. I'm going to stop the airplane. So I have control of the airplane right now. So let's do this. Boom. I'm going to come over here to the failures. I want to, is there a reload all? Perfect. Um, that can stay hydraulic. No longer failed. Apply changes. Green level. No longer apply because we didn't have any of these coming into San Diego. Landing gear. Auto brake failure. Oh, no, that, that we had that, so we'll leave that. Uh, APU is fine. Power plant. We didn't get any surges. I had it armed. So I had left surge armed. We never got one. Um, I'm going to have to play with that. We'll, we're going to get some surges. Don't you worry. We'll leave the engine high vibe. So everything looks normal there. Uh, okay, so with that all done, I'm going to restow uh, this thing. And then we're going to watch our San Diego landing, and that's going to be it. Could you feel asymmetric? Yes, I could feel it uh, through the rudder thrust set. And I don't know if you remember, I, I had a actually I had a thrust and I had actual thrust reverser deferred a few weeks ago. And I wanted to see what that full reverse asymmetry felt like. And you could feel it in the real airplane. I, and I, for science, I mean, there's nothing in the book saying you can't use reverse. Just be aware that you have reverse on one engine. So landing on Lauderdale, sure thing. I went full reverse. I could feel a definite feel the asymmetry. Um, and I was thought it in the real airplane and you could feel it here in the sim. Now I do want to tweak my rudder sensitivities. I don't know what I'm going to put them at yet. Um, but yes, I want to load a replay. We're going to load the San Diego. Um, here we go. So this might uh, be a second here. Let's go replay execute. The sim's going to freak out a minute. Hopefully it won't crash. 
Been a simmer for over 10 years. I've never seen wing flex that smooth. Double D worth. Yeah, man, I, uh, what are we over speeding here? Uh oh, I lost my mouse. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh, it's back. Uh, but double D worth, I agree. With you. So, yeah, the, the Phoenix has the best wing flex of any sim, of any airplane, of any sim, man. And it really is awesome. All right, let's run this one forward here. To the landing, resume. This is a San Diego. This is where we're going to end it for the night. This will be a cool shot coming across the buildings here. Yeah, flaps are full, and I just caught it in the replay. I forget if I set flaps to, like, two, if the Phoenix will automatically deploy them. I'll have to check it on the next one. I'll leave you with one long one here. We're going to watch a wing view touchdown, then we'll watch outside touchdown. Then you'll get one full approach into San Diego without me yapping, and we're going to wrap it up there. That'll be the end of the streaming today. I think it was rather... Uh, successful day of streaming. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Fly by wire has the best wing flex. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't think so. I think Phoenix has got it nailed. Look at that. It might have something to do with the flaps, too. I mean, I think if the fly by wire had its own external model, then you might be able to look at it a little bit differently, but I don't know. That wing flex is pretty dang good right there. PMDG wing flex, I think it's still choppy, but it's not bad. It's just choppy, but like as far as the, the I feel like when I watch the PMDG wing flex, I feel like I'm watching it at 10 FPS. But the flex itself, the angles are good. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, man. I love how the wing deflexes too when the spoilers come up. So I think our green is still bugged. That's why we don't have any reverser on number two. We had two reversers on that touchdown. Real, real. Too low terrain. Let's see what it looked like from the outside view. Over the parking garage. A little bit of an early flare there, a little bit of an aggressive flare, but then we sat her on down. I think, I don't know, I, I think I might keep that 20 curve. This one was out the 20 curve. All right. Flaps to 180, San Diego sunset approach. This is where we end it, Chad. We'll make it like 537. This is where we end it. To all the new members, all those that have donated today, there's lots of membership gifting, lots of super chats, lots of bank angle checks. I appreciate you. I see I had one part one promo said Columbus had a tornado warning and declared people at Columbus were told to shelter in restrooms. Ooh. If the entire airport is a shelter, do you crew and get off planes and shelter in terminal or stay on hope for the best? Uh, if you are if you can get to the shelter, obviously go to the shelter. But I've been on an airplane when a tornado came by at DFW, and that was a little bit spicy. If you're out on the tarmac, there's nothing you can do. You just got to hang on. Uh, but yeah, I heard tower evacuated in Chicago last night. Too. Hopefully everybody was safe. Thank you, Part 1 Promos. Get that spoiler down. There we go. Get down, spoiler. There she goes. Alright. 7.30 p.m. I'm getting out of here. Y'all have been a wonderful audience. I hope you enjoyed the streams tonight. We will be back Friday, breaking everything that we can. Engine surges, engine failures, V1 cuts, 
RTOs pack a lunch because it's going to be fun. Until Friday, y'all have a wonderful rest of your week. Enjoy your Phoenix Block 2s. Post those screenshots in the Discord. I'm going to be out flying uh, Neo tomorrow, so no IAEs for me. Until Friday, y'all stay safe, stay healthy. I'm V1. See us in chat. Enjoy the arrival in the sun. Beyond. Oh, the clouds are coming in. All right. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'm V1. See you.